Good morning, welcome back. How's it going, chat? It's Monday. It's Monday. Wow. Wow. Good morning. How is you? Zolari, thank you for Twitch Prime. Dr. Trebuchet, thank you for your Twitch Prime. Talk more, thank you for Twitch Prime. 56, 34, and one month. Good morning. I still have morning voice. I still have COVID sniffles. But I feel fine because stuff. So, day two, how are you doing? Yesterday we uh, started a new run. We're going for an achievement. It is called Triple the Rome. And we're doing it as Novgorod because why not? Why not? They're the wrong religion, the wrong culture, the wrong government type. Seems perfect. Sure, our goal is to form Russia and then become the Emperor of China and the HRE. Because reasons. We have a interesting, weird start where Austria once again has failed to secure the vote. Passed the first reform, chose these people for allies, the Three Leagues, Augsburg, Mulhaus, and East Frisia. The powerhouses of the HRE. Not the electors, no, no. The strong ones. Should have allied home, to be honest. So he passed the first reform and then immediately lost the election to Hess. So now we have Hess, Defender of the Empire. Fearsome, fearsome Hess. How strong is Hess? Hess has five whole income. He does have a massive 54,000 manpower. Wow. 39 force limits and other numbers as well. <laughs> Alright, I'm still waking up. CW Sherbert, thank you for Twitch Prime. 38 months. Happy Monday. <sighs> Garlic cloves, remove the paper, pierce them with a toothpick into a glass jar, fill up with honey, and let sit for two weeks, burping every day. What? Why would anyone do this? <laughs> what? That sounds like a like a spell or something. Spell from Baldur's Gate. <laughs> Anyway, I noticed some things, um... I don't know why, um, but somehow we've managed to lose more troops than anyone else in this war. And that is just not my style. What the hell happened here? Uh, I think we did get stack wiped with a Merc stack. That was probably part of it, but still. This is not how we roll. Why would we lose 19,000 troops for Sweden? You know? Let's see, what else did I notice? I noticed, uh... This guy's getting kind of big. I need to... Temper that soon. Spend some military points maybe to bring it down. I don't want to, I just, anytime it goes above 60, it feels like it's too close to 80 to me. So yeah, we'll do that. I noticed that I forgot to do my agenda, so I did that between, um, while the music was playing and all that before starting the stream. So, yep, we're gonna get some money tomorrow. That'll be nice. I like money. Do you like money? I like money. I like money. Can't believe you like money too. It's over nine. So it used to be, I used to always just say, I like money. Do you like money? I like money. And now it's morphed into, I like money. <laughs> can't believe you like money too, from Idiocracy. And I can't like go backwards now. So apparently that's just the new way I'm going to say it. Prepare yourself. You should transfer land to Norway. Transfer land, Norway. You should transfer Norway land to your vassal. To Satmi. I sense get land. He does have it marked as vital interest. There's a chance you might transfer it. Sure, we can do that. Why not? We'll do that one. It's the only one that he's got core on. Um, we're going to try to return these cores from Sweden using favors if we uh, break Sweden free. We haven't transferred any of Norway because we don't really want Sweden to become strong. We just want them to become independent. Um, we have enough Boats, I believe, to make flagship. Not quite. Almost. Let's build some more Boats so we can build a flagship. And then uh, go from there. You better not change Monument. No, I won't. Why would I change monument? Um... Are our subjects doing anything? They do have armies. They're so small and weak, they should probably be supportive. Or actually defensive is a good setting to put them on. Lubeck is over here messing with our fort. Um... I updated all of our edicts based on what we needed, so... Dev cost to do the agenda. Back to trade power. Defensiveness here. Beyond that, um... You know, the war's going okay. It would be great if England would bring over their ships. Does England only have one heavy now? What the heck? 
No, they got six. And there's five of them here. Smart. Just use five heavies. Don't bother bringing any other ships. Lord Vulcan, thank you for your sub. 52 months in a row. You've never missed a month. Dude, that's nice. Nice. We have, like, no manpower because we're doing the Russian thing to have no manpower. Peasant freedom. So that's fun. But we are getting 260 per month, which honestly isn't bad. That all being said, I think we're ready to play. Unless you guys have any questions about the save, or... Maybe we should start off looking at the timeline just to see if we missed anything. It's only been 20 years, but you never know. There could be something in here that you guys see that I don't. Bum, 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 bum. What are the requirements to take Mandate? We have to flip to Eastern Religious Group or Pagan. So we have to either become Tengri, Confucian, um, something like that over there. And then if we have physical adjacency to the Emperor of China, we will get the Take Mandate CB, which is required to become the Emperor. So, we will be doing multiple religion flips this campaign. We're going to have to flip to uh, something in that category, and then we also have to flip to either Catholic or Protestant, or we have to ensure the Treaty of Westphalia happens, and then... Sorry, is it Treaty or Peace? I think it's Peace. The Peace of Westphalia. And then... Uh, if, it's, if the Peace of Westphalia happens, then anyone from the Catholic group can become the Emperor. So that would include Orthodox, Coptic, Reformed, Anglican, and of course Protestant and Catholic. But uh, yeah, we can go in either direction. We can either become the Emperor of the HRE first, or we can become the Emperor of China first. Either one can work. This requires different types of shenanigans. Um, the fact that we have a very weak current Emperor kind of incentivizes going for the Empire first, but, uh, we'll see. Bum, 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 bum. Alright, so I guess we gotta resolve this war. Um, I was also looking at potentially attacking Lithuania-Poland. Um, perhaps if we get a Miltech 6 advantage over Lithuania and 6 advantage over Poland, it would be a reasonable time to tax our neighbors. We don't really need their clay, but I do like money. Do you like money? I like money. Money. And they have money, and I want it. I want their money. Just kind of moving the army around to loot a little bit, because, you know, I don't really want to participate in a battle with this 19 stack from Denmark, Norway. Um, also, apparently, Sweden has not enough troops to do a siege. Be down to 2k? Nope. Got 17k. Gotta love when the AI does this. You only need 6k here, and you need 6k here. But let's spread it out like this. 4k and 15k. Smart. Very smart. So we could assist, but we've already done enough work this campaign, I believe. What do you think? The fleet is still protecting trade, right? Yes, good. That fort should hold for a long time. Got a nice attrition tick happening every month. In the winter, at least. Have an extra diplomat free. Might as well spy on Mr. Muscovy again. We only have two diplomats. Normally, we should have three at this stage of the game, but instead of taking the diplomat from Tier 4, we decided to do something weird and try out this, because... Patriarch Authority plus 0.2%, which I think is actually 0.25 per year because rounding. And then also selling titles now gives Patriarch Authority. Wow. Makes the click so much better. Bum, 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 bum. It really irks me seeing this not progress, so I guess we will... I guess we will help. Stupid. Stupid Sweden. Being dumb. East Frisia has decided to accept knowledge sharing from Austria. Are we selling knowledge to somebody? We should be. We can offer it to five countries. This one is not a subject. This one is. This one is not. Ducal Prussia is is a subject of Poland. For some reason, they would accept knowledge. They are loyal. Why are they friendly? Don't know. Do we want to offer knowledge to potentially future rival Z subject? They would give us money. I like money. You like money. 0.5 money a month. Sure. I mean, the subject's gonna get it eventually, right? So, it's 0.5 money. Why not take 0.5 money when you can take 0.5 money? Alright, we're gonna have to... Yeah, that 16 stack's gonna say nope. Looks like we're just gonna once again have to back off on our siege, and... Yeah. This war is being won. It's just, like, I don't want to have to be the one to take that fight. You know, Sweden's got the 20% infantry combat ability. They don't have a very good general, but... Lubeck got pieced out, cool. Sorry, Sweden, you're gonna lose another four stack. I am going to bail. 
Uh, trade crisis. Lose diplo points to make it less. Yeah, we do that because most of our com most of our money comes from trade. Bum, bum. Let's actually head over this way. Try to police our own land a little bit. Try to get this. Oh yeah. Okay. Loot back left. So it's just the Martian now. The rebels aren't really inflicting any damage because we do have excellent zone of control, but also uh, we don't really have any prosperity to protect because we haven't had positive stab for quite a while. Still don't have our Golden Era active, um, so we're kind of not being super efficient with Monarch points. However, Embraced Renaissance is probably the next thing we're going to get. How close are we to having it in every province? We have about 10% there. The land we conquered here is probably the slowest. Looks like this is the province we're waiting on, Totma. I can see doing just a couple basic dev clicks there to speed it up so we can turn on Golden Era. Our truce with our subject is up. Cool. You do like money? Wait, you like money, Silver Kiss? I can't believe you like money too. I like money. I like money. <laughs> it's just so stupidly funny to me for some reason. I like money. Do gain Patriarch Authority or gain Abbot Points. Well, considering that we do gain a lot of uh, Patriarch Authority over time now, like, I did the math on it, right? If you click this every 10 years, sorry, every 5 years, it's another, you know, 5 Patriarch a year, uh, 1 Patriarch Authority per year, we're getting like 0.25 from the, the government reform, we're getting 0.5 from the clergy privilege, wherever it was, this one? Yeah. So, 0.75, 1.75 Patriarch Authority a year, honestly. Would you pay 10 Patriarch Authority for 50 admin points? Not usually, but based on how much we generate, maybe? It's not like we're lacking for the ability to turn on icons, and yeah, more manpower would be good, but also Monarch points. I like Monarch points. I do like Monarch points. And we're doing an ID group, so yeah, let's do it. Our traitor died, sad. Bum bum. No innovativeness to be gained from admin tech. We're also not taking admin tech. Honestly, I think we might hold off until we have Golden Era now for any of these things. Like, unless there's competition for the innovativeness from this idea, for example, I think we're going to bank points. Try to be efficient with our our thing. Your voice sounds rough. Uh, it's just it's just residual COVID stuff. Like. I feel fine. I'm, I'm, I'm like totally healed, I think, from COVID. Not totally, obviously. Well, that's silly, but I feel good. I feel good. It's just morning voice coupled with pre previously had COVID voice. I don't know. What can you do? It happens. Bum, bum, bum. We're losing great power status. Did you know we're a great power? We should probably do great power influence on our derps. Not very expensive. Probably 60 gold. 60 gold, so if they get another admin points, I mean... You never know. I don't know. They might do dev with it or something. I feel like we lack for cash. Even though I do like money, uh, we'll give some of it to our subjects. Why not? Bum, bum, bum. One thing I wanted to point out again, in case you missed yesterday's stream, we have not rolled one general that hasn't been godlike. Like, every single general from the nobles, every general from a king or like a, you know, the Republic leader has been all shock focused gods. They're all amazing. I don't understand what's happening. It's like in the Frankfurt campaign, we were all fire focused. And in this campaign, we're totally shock focused. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy. Is it crazy? Is it crazy? Let's get this guy up here just in case he's not. Get uh, this guy here. That is a subject. We should probably take care of our subjects rebels. Hero bro, thank you for your sub if I missed you. I don't know if I, I might have just said that already, but you know, whatever happens. It's it's early morning and I'm easily distracted at the moment. We do still have four mercs. It would be great to get our full force limit built up in regulars so that we can actually have drill and professionalism and stuff. We've got four cav. Are any of them mercs? No. Okay, so four cav is a good number for us right now. Marumba's lucky game. Careful, you will jinx it. True, probably. We should sell our transports. Knowledge sharing is already over. Well, that didn't take long. Like I said, he was going to get it eventually. 
Come back, and I guess we'll offer it to Gotland. We don't have enough Diplo rep to get good offered knowledge to people. We have access this way. Nope. Looks like Sweden is serious now, and he's actually going to try to take back Elfsburg. Not making any progress on these other ones, but England has arrived. Two siege pips. We don't appear... Do we? Whoa, do we have naval superiority now? I see a blockade from England. Did they kill the, the fleets? Yes. Norway's done to two heavies. There are still eight galleys, but 20 light ships beats eight galleys, right? It'd be nice to have a admiral, but we are behind time on tech a fair bit. Hmm. Is it worth monarch points for an admiral to conserve? No. We have we have infinite sailors, and we have plenty of money to rebuild ships. Therefore, converting diplo points into effectively money and sailors is not reasonable. No, we just let the ships die, whatever. Let's go blockade. See if we can get some of these sieges to actually resolve faster. Maybe we can get Denmark... Sorry, uh... England to come around with their five heavies. Okay, we're poking out against... Wolgast? Wolgast is not part of it. 20 lights versus one heavy, eight galleys, one light. Probably fight for 12 days, get some retreat. Retreat, reinforcement, uh, repairs, and see where we end up. We can go dock up maybe in Kalmar. I wouldn't be surprised if we lose a few ships, which would annoy me though, because I need all of these in order to build a flagship. But we killed one, because we're the best. Um, um. I do have a privilege slot open with the burgers, so we could do it that way. We could turn on the thing for a free dude from them. Burger naval school rights. 50 tradition admiral. Considering that we are going to be going to monarchy not too far in the future. It's not going to be hard to revoke stuff, so maybe it's reasonable. Plus, we can get prestige from naval battles. Wow. Sure, why not? I've sold myself. Give Admiral, please. 4133. We're not going to become Defender of the Faith. We're not going to take this idea unless there's competition. Um... Just finished working. Happy to see you again. Happy to see you. Glad you're here. Alright, so we'll get another repair tick, get everyone pretty much up to full strength. Here's our two lights, which means we have enough to build a flagship. We will, of course, make it a light ship, because it's really the only reasonable option in single player. We will give it the coveted fleet movement speed plus one, the coveted uh, ship trade power on fleet plus one, and then the only other one we care about is either chance to gain skill or privateer efficiency based on where we are in the world, uh, we are pretty likely to eventually privateer in Lubeck or England. English Channel. It's not an unreasonable choice. But eventually we might want to have a different non, different one. They cost the same. We'll take privateer efficiency, I guess. Although we're a republic right now, so we really want to use trips to protect trade or goods produced modifier. Nah, let's go with this one. HMS Bucket of Ducats. The Bucket O Ducats. Classic. Classic name. Easy. Alright, let's get our fleet to. Can they get here in time? Full monthly tick? Yes. Alright, let's send them home. Get these other ships to join up. Kick the transports out. Get our repair tick and go try to blockade again. I think they got Elfsborg back. Good. Looks like Colding fell. This war should be over relatively soon. We could betray Sweden, because we do have 25 individual war score, which we can spike up with blockades. They are afraid of our fleet, or at least afraid of the potential for reinforcement. So we'll keep our fleet there. I was also a little bit annoyed to discover that despite having lost basically half of the total death in troop count, we've only earned 29% participation. Our sacrifice is not appreciated, apparently. Develop Velsk. Convert something. Build a marketplace in Vologda. I really don't like when it asks us to build marketplaces in provinces that don't have centers of trade. It's really quite silly to me. But it does increase base production. 100 gold to gain one Diplo Dev is fine-ish, I guess. Maybe. We could also temporarily make the boyars happy if we do their thing, but that's culture conversion. Uralic. Uralic. 
I mean, sure, I guess. The boyars are actually gonna give us base production. Sure, whatever. It's only, it's cheap, right? Should be. 25 dipple points for one dev click, basically. Sure. I did also, before starting the session, decide that we are going to culture convert Neva instead of waiting for Admin Tech 10, because I think we will want to upgrade the monument. I'm just looking at our income and noticing that we have nothing to spend money on, so. It's in the White Sea? True, but eventually we might end up having control of the English Channel. It's fine, you know? It's fine. Whatever. Whatever. Turn that off, turn this off. Over here, um, this was to hopefully get the Renaissance spread everywhere quicker in this one province. We're behind on Diplotech, we can be further behind on Diplotech, that's fine. Let's do two clicks here, just so it spreads a little bit faster. And this will be the trigger, 1470. Three years, we can turn on our Golden Era. Hopefully we don't hit the cap before then. Hopefully we don't have competition for innovativeness before then. I'd like to save those 10% points on stuff and things. Our army is not currently doing anything. Um, but we are blockading, so I think we're going to go and drill. We're done helping. We've helped enough, okay? I participated. Stop judging me, AI. Alright, let's also train some more infantry so we're getting more professionalism over time. And these guys can suppress because they are mercs. And uh, that's pretty much all we're doing now. Random Index! Thank you for your 8th month. Novgo, uh, no, Novgo Bear, Best Bear. Have my Bezos ducats. Thank you for your Bezos ducats. It's very, uh, very generous. We're no longer a great power, Sag. Um. Bum, 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 bum. Hey, look, an army. We can kill it. Bum, bum. Can't change the leader of this Merc company, which is not great. They don't have enough troops to do the siege, though, and it's just one province worth four dev, so I don't really care about prosperity there. Gotta love when this happens. We're getting called for pizza as a secondary participation, sorry, secondary participant in a war that we didn't start. And we have no control over the finish or end of. Brilliant. When, please, please, when will you fix that paradox? The, par the, the subject should never, sorry, the, the, the player should never, ever be ex getting a penalty because the AI refuses to peace out. Keep in mind, this is a player only mechanic. Player only! The AI never, ever, ever get Call for Pizza. Ever. It's not something that they can experience. So it's bullshit that they're giving it to us. Bullshit. If Martian's out. And then there was one, plus his subject. Base sitting spawned. Cool. Um... Okay, we got a year until we have to take this idea. Until... January the 4th. Don't forget, Jimmy. Looks like those rebels are about to reduce our war score against Trun against uh, Norway. We have 92 war score. Of course, of course, of course, it's not time to peace out. I mean, there's no way that, there's just no way. He's got negative 20 enthusiasm, which means you can usually go 20 over the war score that you currently have and still get the acceptance. So we could currently do a 112% peace deal. But we gotta keep fighting. Gotta keep fighting. Um because reasons. I'm gonna go ahead and transfer some of the fort, some of these provinces to him, just in case that's what he's waiting on, but um, my annoyance level is very high. Very high. Please peace out. Please peace out. Please peace out. Please peace out. Why are we still at war? Thank you. Denmark grants independence to Sweden. Denmark cedes Lund, Blecking, Going, Vestjylland, Nordjylland, Ostjylland, Kolding, and Schleswig to Sweden. Norway cedes Bohuslan and Smalenini to Sweden. Notably, nothing got ceded to us, including Satmi's province from Norway. However, we have 27 favors, and Satmi has cores. So, if you could go ahead and immediately give me some of this clay, I would appreciate it. You will return core province and area. Thank you. Each one will cost us... well... Three favors per dev, and I think they're all three dev. Bum, bum, bum. So over the next few months, we'll do that. And still till January here. 
Bum, bum, bum. I need to revoke bad embargo on Denmark. Who else can we embargo or rival? Oh, okay, sure. Let's rival Denmark. I'm glad that I broke my embargo of him for no reason. Get our fleet back to protecting trade. Um, bum, 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 Pum, 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 pum. Okay, um, keep on training some more troops, get our troop count all the way up to max, get ready for a war with Lithuania Poland. Uh, Sweden, we will like more land, please. Return the land, thank you. We might want to start currying favor also because we actually don't generate favors very quickly. Isn't that crazy? AE, what, for Sweden? Wow, yeah, he did take a lot. Um, his AE is at 38 with most of northern Germany. 46 with some of the people on the coast. He went right up to the limit. He got a little stronger than I would have liked, but that's alright. We can seize land and sell titles for Patriarch Authority. We are at a good number to do so. I like money. Do you like money? I like money. We have money now. Cool. Neat. Sweden. I like provinces, too. Give the province. And uh, we can go back to spying on Lithuania for the moment. Actually, the spy network on Lithuania is not really necessary, because if we do fight them, we're going to win based on battles. So I guess we should start currying favors with Sweden instead. Flagship should be completing soon. We've got transports that we don't need. Probably should just sell them. But we're not over the force limit while having a flagship, which is very expensive. So let's bring back both guys, get that taken care of. Denmark or uh, Gotland, do you want to buy some transports? You can have them. You can have them all. I don't want them. Ten ducats. You get a transport. And you get a transport. And Poland's not our rival yet, so you get a transport. And Denmark is a rival. Sweden, do you want a transport? How about Mecklenburg? You get a transport. How about Lubeck? You can also have a transport. No? Never mind. How about Hamburg? Too far away. How about Stettin? At war. Olgast. Riga, you, you're not a valid rival. You want to transport? Nice. Uh, Mecklenburg, you had bought one, right? Buy another, thank you. Alright, Sweden, curry favor. Buy on Muscovy. Mm -hmm. Actually, we should probably just improve relations with Sweden, like, really focus on getting this stuff returned to our derp. Bum, ba -dum. Are you going to colonize Siberia or just conquer along the hordes? Uh, I think we're going to form Russia, and then we're going to have the ability to colonize that way. Uh, it's January, and I missed out on my innovativeness. Shit. 1444. We should be at 20 innovativeness. I'm bad. Oh, well. We're two provinces away from being able to turn on Golden Era. This one and this one. 71. One more click here. And honestly, sure. One more click there. I don't want to wait. I'm very impatient. All right. Our dude died. Pazadinik Yosef. Age 73, old dude. We can get a 613, which uh, apparently the stats on here all lie. It's going to be plus one higher than it always says in each category because of our thing. So this guy could be a 364. Um keeping Republican tradition high does get us through government reform progress faster, so I guess we'll just always probably let the lottery decide. Hopefully he's good. We got a 364. Nice. Oh, and he's only 53. Wow. We're the most behind on Diplotech, and we generate not good Diplo. So we probably get most benefit from this one. Bum, bum, bum. Sorry if it's been asked and answered, but why Novgorod instead of Muscovy? Because it's harder and more fun. More funner. Okay, uh, Golden Era is going to give us 10% morale of armies, and we're going to have Miltech 6 versus Lithuania's Tech 4, Poland's Tech 6. Poland's got 32k troops now, Lithuania's got 28. We can set up a show superiority war against them, though, using defensive terrain with... Um, we do currently have adaptive combat terrain bonus in Woods. So if they try to move into Lucky, 
and we have a maneuver advantage, we potentially have Woods bonus, River Crossing, Adaptive Combat Train bonus for a total of plus three defensiveness when they try to come into our land. Which will not go well for them, I must say. It will not. Hey, Prospering Times, the new version, buffed. And we're buffing Corellia, which is fortunately in our primary node. Good. Well, we are doing an ID group that requires admin points, but... 25 local trade power, forever. Is kind of unnecessary, to be honest. We already have... Uh, ridiculous 160 trade power in our capital province. And we have room for more level 2 centers of trade. So... 25% local tax and governing cost minus 25. Local defensiveness? No. I think we actually take this one. It's not a particularly valuable trade good, and we're doing an ID group. And so, sure, fine. Whatever. Bum, 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 bum. Solo war? How can you survive ally Lithuania? How can you survive ally Lithuania? You don't think we can beat Lithuania, Poland, Livonian Order, Ordiev? They only have 80,000 troops. We have 30,000. That's plenty, right? Raise your hat, Jimmy. Raise your hat? Raise your hand, Jimmy, if you think we can't beat Lithuania, who's two techs behind us, and we're going to have Golden Era Morale of Armies, and a plus three bonus in defensive train. And also, don't forget about the most important general. Not only do we have 4432 and a 0641 with infantry combat ability plus 10, but we also have General Winter. Wow. Severe winters. I mean, their numbers mean nothing. Their numbers mean nothing. Our numbers, our, our arrows will blot out the sun and the wind and the wind will castrate them. It'll remove their testes. That is way too much influence for the traders. We need to buy that down. Um, let's do a couple clicks here. Bum, 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 bum. Why are you, are you drilling? You are drilling. Okay, we have room for two more troops. More troops, please. Bum, 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 bum. You always take the minus 25% governing option. That's not a bad argument, honestly. Is that, I think that's the one we took too. Yeah, province governing cost minus 25. It does help, right? Like, eventually you're going to have governing capacity problems. Especially if you're fixed to duchy rank like we are. Um, tell people they can attach to our merc stack. Tell our subjects to be supportive for future wars. We're just kind of chilling, waiting for what? We're waiting for the ability to turn on Golden Era. Which is... It. This and this. Which is, like, next month or two months from now. Cool. Let's stop drilling and get ready for war. Or maybe we should keep drilling so that they keep on thinking that we have no army and they come right to us. Assume we fight Lithuania. We do have to deal with the Livonian Order as well. So they're going to come in from this direction and this direction. Lithuania is rival to Muscovy, so we probably don't have to worry about anyone coming around this way. Although Muscovy might give access just to spite us. But even if they do, we have good zone of control. And uh, it doesn't matter which direction they come from. You know, if they send some troops up this way, it's going to be partial a partial army, not the whole army. So we won't have to worry. There's our golden era. Boom. We can now take ideas. Hopefully we get innovativeness from this next one. We do. Cool. Print culture. Institution spread plus 25%. And we almost have optimism. Cool. We can also take miltech. Will that invalidate a rival? No. Maybe. No. And no. Muscovy's on tech 5. Here's with Muscovy is up in 74, four years. All right, I think we take tech. I think we go murder the people. Murder the people? Murder the people. Should we accept Muscovite culture? We are eventually going to become an empire and get free cultural acceptance, but the next war is going to be conquering a lot of Muscovite core, Muscovite territory. The effect for having it not currently accepted is small because it's a brother culture, part of our culture group, but might be worth it. If we weren't behind on Diplotech, I would probably do it. Alright, there's our Miltech 6. We can upgrade to 
New Cavalry. Voodoobegs, thank you for 50 second month. When getting that mass dev event, does it not make sense to dev something? Dev some before clicking the event. Uh, it can, if you are in a situation where you have the desire to do development anyway. Um, so like, let's use another example that's very similar. You know how when you have a stability event on the screen and you're at, like, say, one stab, you might want to take a stab click, then take the stab from the event so that you get effective monarch points out of it, right? And you go to a full three stab. But if you're currently doing an administrative ID group and you're behind time on Ebintech or you're behind time on Coring or whatever, is getting to three stabs something you would want to spend Monarch points on anyway? No. So... So in that case, I wouldn't do it. You know, I would just be content with the free stab click. I look at this dev event the same way, like... It's over am I super excited about doing dev in Corellia with uh, Fur when I, you know... I'm not. Like, I don't really need to do the dev, so, no. Yep, we'll automatically get it when we become Russia, but keep in mind, that's, like, pretty far away. We have to be on Admin Tech 10, and we're on Admin, Admin Tech 5 at the moment. Gain stab, go all the way to re stab. I like that. I like stab. I don't like money. Alright, so we're ready potentially for a war again. No valid rivals aside from the two we currently have. And Tharasex, thank you for your 42nd month. Happy Monday. Uh, Anna Spiachi. <laughs> Spiachi. Who's that? That's <laughs> Anna Spiachi is a spy master? <laughs> Neat. Uh, she, she suspects someone. Okay, sure. Shall we do the war? Shall we tax our neighbors? Do you want to see the evidence that we can beat 80,000 troops? With uh, 35,000 troops, or whatever. I believe we can. We got a flagship, so we should add naval superiority now. We got an admiral, we've got good generals, we've got Miltech 6. Lithuania's on Tech 4. Poland did take Tech 6, but we have Golden Era. Let's see how we shake out against, like, Poland's army, because he's the only one that's dangerous. Poland has... Currently... They would have 2.98 plus 0.99, so they'd be at 3.97 morale to our 4.01. We don't currently have the aristocrats in charge, which we can put in charge for an extra 5% morale of armies. We have a half-price land maintenance guy, we could swap him to a morale of armies guy for another base 3 times 0.1. So we can get 0.45 more morale total right now, putting us a full like half point ahead of them. We do get to retain our Discipline Advantage from the Icon, so we have a Discipline Advantage, Siege Ability Advantage. Defensiveness doesn't matter, because the war would be based on battles, very similar to what we did with Muscovy. Just win enough War Score from battles to get the Ticking War Score maxed out, and then... Well, if we do it that way, we only get to take money from Lithuania. We would have to actually siege Poland to be able to take Poland's money. But even if we just tax Lithuania, it's still practically free money. Dev costs don't go up from events. That's not true. The cost to do development in a province is not based on the amount of times that it's been approved. It's based on the size of the province. See how it says development plus 15%. So the formula for increased cost from development increases every 10 dev clicks. Like every, every 10 dev in a province increases the rate at which the development formula gets more expensive. So if you like look at our capital, we have 37 dev here. So how do we get to 162% increased dev? The first, like, nine points of dev increase the cost, I believe, by 1%. The next 10 dev cost... Uh, the next 10 dev, dev points going from 10 to 19. Or 10 to 20. Uh, I think it's actually from 10 to, to 19. So, like, development 10 will increase the cost for future development by 2%. Development 11 also increases it by 2%, etc. And then on dev 20, it increases it by, I think, 3%. And then it, it keeps scaling like that. So when, when looking at it, it does. He's right that it can make sense to do your dev with real monarch points first. And then turn the event in. But again, we're not in a position where we would be, we would be doing development right now anyway. We're, we're getting there. We'll be there very soon. We're nine years at a time of Miltech. We have 355 points already. Like, yeah, we're probably going to end up sinking points into development, but we weren't at that time. 
And we also didn't have Golden Era active. So, yeah, I like to wait for all of my efficiencies if I can. Do you need to be Catholic to get the vote as the HRE Emperor? Uh, not necessarily, but yes, right now. Right now, the only religion that can be the Emperor is Catholic. So, yes, but not necessarily. It is possible to be um, other religions and still be the Emperor. So, um, Jimmy, do you want to do the war? Can we tax the uh, Lithuanians for no reason at all? I think we shall. Bottom achievey. Boop, 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 boop. We have full morale, basically. For military points, we can switch to this. Do Just do one click. I can turn it on at will. We... Don't necessarily need to be running a level 2 guy anymore, plus he's getting kind of old. I think we will switch to Morale of Armies guy. Level 1. Gotta be efficient, right? Almost have enough favors for another province from this guy. I think we'll scootage Peskov, because we don't want him to participate and get stack wiped in an important war where it's based on battles. And honestly, same thing with Satmi. I just don't want them to get overrun with their 1 stacks, like idiots. And uh, our navy is probably fine. So, we'll do the same setup that we did before. We have an embargo on Lithuania. They have an embargo on us if we break our embargo on them. And then immediately the next month after, declare war using the one-way embargo CB called Trade Conflict based on battles. Then we can really murder them easily. And it also makes it cheaper to take money and war ups and stuff. So, nice. Improve the capital. Sure. I like improving the capital. Can you still hide manpower? I think you can. Did we just gain manpower when I did that? We did. It canceled one of my dudes. They did They did stop it. Interesting. Smart. They're actually making the game smarter. Nice. We're completely safe in this location, so we will keep drilling to incentivize them to come to us. But let's go ahead and revoke our embargo. There's trade dispute. Show superiority. Hopefully he doesn't break his embargo before I can declare the war. We'll need to murder the Livonian order relatively early. Bum, 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 bum. We'll wait till June 1st. Is it bad if a trade company gold provinces? So, is your question, is it bad to make a gold trade good province into a trade company? It's not bad. It is definitely something that you might do if you have no governing capacity available because, you know, um, well, I mean, trade companies actually do cost more than simple territories, but generally you do want to state gold provinces so that you can get... Here, let's just find a gold province, like, say, Bohemia's in Eger. So he's got no autonomy here, basically. Gold is one of the, I believe, in vanilla EU4, the only trade good in the entire game that is not affected by local production efficiency. You cannot use production efficiency buildings like workshops. It doesn't matter if you have you know, production efficiency from economic ideas or from your national ideas. Gold is unaffected by production efficiency. It is only affected by goods produced, and goods produced is affected by autonomy. So if you have a trade company building, or a trade company province in a gold province, uh, generally a trade company will have 90% autonomy floor. So you're going to lose 90% of the gold production of the province. So yes, generally you will want to state your gold provinces, but there are times where I don't care, you know? Like, let's say that we are um, 50 more years into the game. Let's say that we are making number one income in the world, which we will be soon, and we have enough manpower, and governing capacity is pissing me off because it's a not fun mechanic that they added to the game and requires tedious micromanagement. And let's say we start to expand into Africa and we get a gold province. Getting a gold province in Africa is not going to, like, change our situation and suddenly make us rich when we were poor. So I don't care. I don't value gold the same way that a lot of other people do. Gold can be really good, but it's an unreliable source of income because if you try to bump a gold mine to a huge amount, then they collapse, which wastes your monarch points. It's, it's a virtual inevitability that they will collapse. So I always look at gold income as a temporary source of power in order to get me enough income and manpower and military might to secure permanent income, like 
trade and production, for example. So, limited number of states weren't any better. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, for a map painting simulator, they certainly do try to find ways to prevent you from painting the map, don't they? Anyway, it's June 1st. Let's go. Give clay. Or don't give clay. Give give monies. This is a sh show superiority trade war. Simply for the fact that we get power projection out of it, and we get to tax our neighbor, and we'll end up spending money on monument. Monument. Very few, very little war score from battles here. Let's uh, temporarily hunt enemy fleets in the Baltic Sea, see if we can pick off all their ships before we go too much further. We might siege provinces, but probably not. Let's start spying on Muscovy, actually. Whoops. There are 15 ships, 6 galleys, 24 light ships with a flagship definitely beats any number of galleys, I believe, with enough time. We might lose a ship or two, but like I said, we don't care. We'll just build more. Bum, 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 bum. Oh no, they're coming at us. All size plus 10% on Admiral David. He has somehow made all of the ships a little bit bigger with magic. Magic. It's magic. We um, probably do want to try to get an early battle here, so supply is only 22. We could wait for winter to soften them up. We have defensiveness on here. Morale of Armies guy is definitely the one we want, I think. That is actually just way too many troops for our current combat width. Combat width is only 20... Oh, it is 24. Okay. We'll pull back for infantry. That's combat width. Supply is doable. You can have this four stack continue to drill. The mercs are just gonna sit here for now. We'll wait for full morale. Let them suffer some attrition. Get some more exhaustion, that kind of thing. Keep an eye on their armies, see if they go around in a different direction. There's a good chance based on how the battle's gonna go. In fact, we should probably take the fight before he takes like Biltek 5. We'll get one more morale recovery tick, and then we're gonna go stack wipe this 11 stack. Even if the 13 reinforces, pretty sure we we do win the fight. We might want to scorch the province as well, so that these reinforcements can't happen. The fact that he doesn't want to fully reinforce is a great indicator. Poland's like, fuck that. Nope, not gonna do it. Go take optimism. Got missionary strength as well. Or score from battles will go like big 10. Cool. That is also worth three war score. But that guy's going here as well. We'll just back off. Let's scorch. And honestly, um We do alright, Paskov's my subject now. Kinda forgot about that. But they're not in the war. So let's see. From his perspective, the zone of control does project into our neutral subject that's scootaged. So, question is, are we safe here? If they start from Narva and go Ingermanland, they've got to go to Novgorod. If they go into Peskov, then they have to go to Lucky. If they go into Ostrov, they have to go to Lucky. If they go to Rezev, they've got to go to Novgorod. They could get in here, from Torapets to Koln. So we're not safe here to drill. But we're, we're safe in Neva. We'll just back this army off. Let them reestablish their siege, suffer some attrition for a while. You guys moving into Peskov. Bum, 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 Diplotech. Issue the embargo back. Thank you. Thank you. You remembered. You remembered the thing that I said yesterday that I always forget. <laughs> when doing this type of Casus Belli. Glorious mild winter due to siege plus one. 3.3% attrition on 39,000 troops. And it's gonna get a worse. It's October. It's October! Currently have mild winter. These update on the monthly tick, I believe. Hopefully they'll go to normal or whatever soon. Personally, I feel like based on where I grew up, November like should already be winter, but you know, it's... I don't know. Oh no, they're coming to our capital. Because they don't see a threat from our drilling army. Now they're trapped. 
Uh, yep, so we're gonna threaten to go here. We do get a recovery tick. This army's gone on the first. This will be a fight in flat terrain with a 14 stack. We don't want them to leave. Lithuania. Livonia or Poland, Ducal Prussia, and Odi have gained army tradition, or we gain unrest in the capital. We'll do that. We'll trap them there for a little while while we get morale reinforced. I never did turn on this to get 5% more max morale, but that is an easy overrun, assuming that they don't try to reinforce. Let's go for that. Send enough troops that so we have 10 to 1 ratio to guarantee the overrun. Didn't get any bonus war score from the show superiority CB, unfortunately, there. It's okay, though. Could be worse. Still killed a Cav. We changed the culture of a province. That is... Not a province they can easily get to. This army is locked. The second army is the Lithuanian army. It's locked, moving to Rezev in the wrong direction. Could kill the Ducal Prussia army pretty easily. These guys came in from Narva or Pskov, so they cannot reinforce this way. Lucky can't go through either. I think this is safe. They might try to reinforce like this, but that's like the only angle they can get in through. So it should be a quick stack wipe. And now... We could take this all together. Defensive terrain behind a river. Adaptive combat terrain bonus. Or we could do two separate fights. They're going to be there on the 26th. We can be there on the 4th. We go this way, we're there on the 30th. Alright, so we're already not capturing both. That's fine. We'll take the smaller stack. Hopefully that army gets locked coming in as a second fight. Get locked. Nice. Seven war score. They are piling in, attempting to, but another stack wipe should happen here. Full more war score. We go back to Neva. We now have war score from battles at 33. Ticking war score is growing. And General Winter will take the wheel. Bum, 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 bum. Back to drilling. Still just mild winter here. What a weak winter, Sag. Hey look, another army is here. Let's stop drilling. Using, um... Using, what's it called? Essentially, like, drill baiting enemy armies to come fight you is kind of OP. I'm not, if I'm honest. We will definitely fight Lithuania's army, even though it's kind of big, 19 troops, because he's two techs behind. We look like this against him. Lithuania's at 3.53 morale to our 4.36. And we have a discipline advantage. And again, he didn't get a river crossing coming in this direction, but we have a two advantage here with a six shock general. He rolls a nine. He's got a 1-3 versus our 0-6 with infantry combat ability plus 10. Should be a full stack wipe, honestly. Boom. Bye, Lithuania. That would be the war leader with 15k troops left. And we're capped on war score from battles at 40. So, the goal of this is just to tax our neighbors. No reason to carry it on any longer than we need to. So we're just going to go for this. 52 war score, peace deal. 695 gold. Money war ups. Soon as, uh, as soon as Lithuania's full army is either stack wiped or they pick up enough war exhaustion and enthusiasm drops, we'll have it. Bum, 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 bum. All right. And the Torbets here. Like we can maybe pick off that three stack. Nope. They're afraid of our army, so we have to go back to drilling and drill bait again. Marumba making men disappear. That's kinky. I'm kind of tempted to delete the mercs soon. We are over the land force limit slightly, and they don't, you know, I can't drill them. Their general's trash. I think we do get rid of them. We needed them earlier, but not anymore. Um, oh, hey, look, because I'm drilling, they came back. Can you believe it? Drill bait. Shark bait, ooh ha ha. And one reinforcement tick's probably enough to allow us to take this fight. 12k troops, mostly owned by Lithuania. That's the war leader. That's who we want to make hate life. So we'll go fight them. Should be a stack wipe. Retreat back to Neva. Just lost our 
this this guy is the guy we got like hired on November the 11th at the start of the campaign. He's 68 years old. He's still still kicking. That doesn't mean he's gonna die soon, but still, he's a badass. No Lithuanian army here, so we'll ignore it for now. Bum, bum, bum. Lithuania is down to still 17. Negative 50 reasons for peace. Might as well pick off a 5 stack if they're going to present themselves. We'll do this now. Name a province after him? We can do that, sure. That's just something we used to do a long time ago. We can definitely do it again. Lose our spy master. Spy master Anna, or lose admin points. Uh, well, I don't want to lose admin points either way, but this one is smaller, so sure. Morale of navies, sure. Or spy master. Do, 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 do. Is the guy who didn't think we could beat all of these people still in chat, or did he have to Sudoku himself? Like I said, it's only 80,000 troops on their side. Only. No big deal, right? That's a, another Lithuanian army. Kill it with fire. Hopefully we don't lose our general in the middle of the fight, because he's an old man now, but another stack wipe. Back to drilling. Lithuania has medium enthusiasm. That should be a defensiveness. He's got 6k troops, 9k manpower. He has lost already. The enemy has lost 114,000 troops. We have lost 6,226. Pretty good exchange rate. He did leave? Random index, did you actually look him up? <laughs> he actually left chat? <laughs> That's hilarious. Poland, what you doing up there? What, what you doing? 4% attrition. That's, that's a lot of attrition, buddy. Let's get, uh... I mean, we got 45 day siege sticks. I don't like how they're already at negative 28. Kind of surprising that they, uh... are able to do that. This is where having a coastal fort would make it a little bit more defensive, but... Bum, 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 bum. We're gonna go down there, fight that army, come back. Hey look, they decided, wait, it's a bit cold, it's a bit cold. Alright, we have to do reference. Eddie Izzard. Hitler. Never played Risk. As a kid. Insert reference. So yeah, so we had empires in Europe. We did. We had empires we had in empires. Everyone had France and Spain and, and Britain and, and Turkey. The Ottoman Empire, full of furniture for some reason. <laughs> and the Austro-Hungarian Empire, famous for fuck all! <laughs> yes, yeah, so all they did was slowly collapse like a flan in a cupboard. <laughs> and the German Empire, very organized, always build an empire. Ein, zwei, ein, zwei, build an empire. Very Prussian. And then they'd celebrate with the World War and then lose the whole fucking empire by the end of the war. <laughs> In the 30s, Hitler, Czechoslovakia, Poland, France, Second World War, Russian Front, not a good idea. Hitler never played Risk when he was a kid. Because, <laughs> you know, playing Risk, you could never hold on to Asia. That Asian, Eastern European area, you could never Seven hold armies. it, could you? Seven extra men at the beginning of every go, but you couldn't fucking hold it. Nope. Australasia, that was the one, Australasia. All the purples. Get everyone on Papua New Guinea and just build up and build up. Completely correct. And Hitler ended up in a ditch covered in petrol on fire. So, Poland just did a, it's a bit cold, it's a bit cold. He's like, this is fine, this is fine. Dog on fire, meme. And then decided, wait, wait, it's a bit cold. We're suffering a lot of attrition, let's not do this. Love when the AI does that. They like, go all the way up to a fort to commit to it fully, and then they're like, nah, maybe this is a bad idea. Maybe we shouldn't do that. Suffering attrition here is annoying. See, I'm annoyed at 1% attrition, and they're casually suffering like 4% attrition. Silly. Very silly. Poland, what you doing? Where are you going? Alright, Lithuania, are you ready to give us the stuff? Negative 38 still, huh? Wow. Alright, fine. Be that way, dude. We'll just have to kill more of your men. The Burgundian succession has fired. 
Where among the possible options they went with, Aragon will defend us again. They've decided to fall into a personal union under Aragon. Okay, is that the disaster? No, that is just... Aragon now has a union over Burgundy. Okay, so be it. Wait, how did you get that sound menu that you can easily mute one program without using four buttons? You mean this? It's a app called Ear Trumpet. Because this is functionality that used to exist in Windows. And then when like Windows 9 or 8 or 10 or 11 or whatever number we're on came out, they decided that it was stupid and bad to have control over individual programs easily. And I disagreed, so I found a source or thing to make it come back again. It does exist? I don't care. They they messed it up in one they messed it up in one Windows and I'll never forgive them. And that's why I use third-party programs to do stuff and things. Do we have an updated list of all the mods that I use? Yes, there's a command for it. I think it's just exclamation mod or mods or mod list. Trial three, one of them. I'm not wrong, volume mixer got messed up at one point. Come on. Come on. It did. It, it was different at one point for a while. Do 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 Lithuania is up here now. Do 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 we'll just do this fight for now. Um and also potentially kill the Polish army. I mean Lucky is just such a great location to fight. In fact, can we rename it to Lucky? Like it's a lucky province. Because I mean it's perfect terrain, behind rivers on all sides, like, it's it's fantastic, right? Like, we should never win this fight. Look at that morale disparity, right? But... Oh, they got three maneuver. How did he avoid Bar River Crossing? Did he come in through Peskov, maybe? I guess he must have. No River Crossing advantage, even though we have more maneuver than they do. He had to have come through Peskov. Bum, bum, bum. We are very low on morale, but we still won. In fact, we still stack wiped. Because... Sometimes the numbers be the way they are. We have 18 favors. Is that enough for all the remaining cores? I only need one more remaining cores. I guess we don't need to curry favor anymore. Bum, 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 bum. Bum. Lithuania, like, the bleeding will stop when you just give me what I want. Anytime you want to do it, buddy. They do have a chance to take our fort up there. Supply is not great, so let's go with, like, uh, here, we want to make sure we're reinforcing our cav. Let's consolidate our streltsy first, because apparently that's the right way to do it. Then we'll consolidate all of them, actually. Bum, 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 bum. Let's go force them off that siege. Um, never did have to put the nobles in charge, the aristocrats, for the 5% max morale in order to win these fights. So we got that going for us, which is nice. As always, just a quick strategic thing to talk about. Rather than going cargo pull to Shenkursk, instead of going directly to it and giving them a path to reinforce up this way, we want to come down to Vels, then go to Totma, position ourselves between any potential reinforcement route and then take the fight to prevent them from piling in. There's a 7% chance the fort falls, but this way they, they just definitely won't be able to reinforce. Bum, 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 bum. Stack wipe? Stack wipe? Not a stack wipe. You need to commit Sudoku. Old man. Old man withers. Negative 14 reasons. Okay, chat is saying that opening the volume mixer in 11 is a lovely little flashback. I don't know what that means. We rename Lucky after our doubting friend Nirvana. Was Nirvana a subscriber or just a viewer? I don't feel like we should reward random people who come in to naysay, unless they're subscribers, in which case maybe. Second age bonus, uh, hmm. We are suffering for manpower. Eventually, we will colonize if we become Russia, but I think that happens after the first era. That explains it. Wondering how we stack wipe with low morale. Bum, 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 bum. It's not just full tech width, full combat width, and tech advantage. It's you have to be able to reduce the enemy's morale to zero in 12 days of combat. You can't, like, 
your army can't lose in the first 12 days, even if you have less morale than they do. Unless your morale itself goes to zero. And because I know that the fight is so favorable, and our general is so much better, the train's better, river crossing, adaptive combat train, etc, etc. Not to mention combat ability on the infantry from the, the general. I know that 12 days of combat is not going to be enough for our morale to go to zero, if we have at least one recovery tick. So basically, if we go from drill, which sets our morale to 0.5, and we get one morale recovery tick, we're going to be at like 1.3 or 1.5 or something. And we're on there, and I know that's enough to win 12 days of combat. It's something you have to feel. You have to know it to know that it's safe to do that. Because you can get stack wiped. If you take a fight, like if I tried taking a fight with just 0.5 morale, we'd probably get stack wiped. Or at least lose. How are you to infantry ratio? Nah. Snake claims, don't think we need because we're going to have, well, this could be useful after we get to become Russia and have like Russian claim potential. A impact's useless. I don't like to do transfer subject because it costs diplo points. I guess we'll just do war taxes for now and then turn it on and forget about it. Bum-ba-dum-bum-bum-ba-dum-bum-bum-ba-dum-bum-bum-bum-bum-bum-bum-bum-bum-bum-bum-bum-bum-bum-bum-bum-bum-bum-bum-bum-bum-bum-bum-
can't believe you like money too. <laughs> Here, let's build barracks like everywhere. I don't care. All the barracks. Wait, shit. If we're gonna build that many, we should probably get the guilds in charge. Hmm. Probably cost me 32 or 40 admin points to potentially save however many buildings I just started times 10 gold. Yeah. We should wait for the guilds. We should also consider maybe putting the uh, the other ones in charge. What are they called? The other ones. The, the religious thing. Go back to construction cost minus 10. We have 23% patriarch authority. Um, yeah, we have no manpower, and Icon of St. Michael kind of does help with that, but it doesn't help with devving, and it doesn't help with, uh, money. Money. In inflation? Sure. We are sitting very close to the Republican tradition cap, and we have no control over when we do our elections, but sitting at 100 and missing out on our recovery rate over time, I think is still fine because of the extra reform progress growth we get out of it. I mean, we are knocking out government reforms quick. 1.9 a month is so fast. Gain temple points, and the guilds lose influence. They go from zero to negative 10. Wow. Or we can gain mercantilism. We can go from 100% mercantilism to 101%. Hmm. Hmm. Easy choice. Lithuania. Lithuania is ready to peace out. Give us money. Uh, real quick, we'll check to see if anyone wants a separate piece. Individual war score with Livonian order is at this negative nine reasons for white peace. If we blockade them, we might be able to get to, uh, did they delete a fort? They deleted their fort in Raval. They went down to a level one fort after our war. Let's blockade their capital, see if we can get them out on, like, white peace or something. An army career, gain tradition. Sure, I like tradition. Blockade all of his land. It gives the 25 war score. If we just do white peace with him, we can double tap the Lithuanians sooner, potentially. We'll just do this, sure. You can leave. We can also blockade Poland, but I doubt that's going to be enough to get him out of the war. Oh, we lost Odiev. They left, they left our trade league when I attacked. Whoopsie. I uh, didn't pay any attention to that. Odiev, do you want to rejoin the trade league? He does. I'll come back. Did you have fun? Did you enjoy that war, Odiev? You shouldn't have done it, sir. We have room for more boats. I have secured a galley and a transport in the fighting. Would you like to buy my dumb, useless ships, sir? Poland has rivaled us as a direct result of us making fun of them a lot. Good. Good. Uh, hmm. Uh, that's a lot of dudes. Just losing loyalty is fine. Sure. Riga, please buy my galley. No? How about... I don't know, Ducal Prussia. Do you want a galley? How about Sweden? Do you want a galley? You all suck. I'm going to delete it. Go to 27 light ships. 28, whatever. We can use a government ability. Reform Subnik. Lose autonomy. Uh, do we even have autonomy? We have a little bit. We could wait till the war with Muscovy is over, which will be in now. Our truce is up in two months. It's time. In before someone says, you don't have any manpower. <laughs> you know someone's going to be like, Arumba, you don't have any manpower. You can't declare war. That's crazy. That's crazy. Bum, 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 bum. Um, um, um. Get them in charge. Let's go ahead and build some barracks. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum. Do, 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 do. All right. Um, we can put the other ones back in charge now. I'm not building any more buildings for a little while. Probably. Do put the aristocrats in charge, actually, since we have no manpower. We take Miltech soon. 
We need 3% more crown land to make this click reasonable. I, I'm very motivated to do this for the Patriarch Authority on top of the money, but how many Monarch points would that cost to get 3% crown land? It's 15 dev clicks. Average cost probably like 30 to 40-ish. We spread it out. We have some governing capacity available. Culture conversion is almost done here, so that's nice. We can build our monument soon. Monument. This will become our capital at some point, so devving it now is fine. Let's do... I mean, I'd like to do military dev in the capital state, where we have a level 3 center of trade. Level 3 inland center of trade, specifically. Which, in case you're unfamiliar for some reason, Jimmy. Level 3 inland centers give 33% local manpower to the whole state, while level 3 coastal centers give... Sailors. Gross. Sailors are gross and dumb. Alright, so... 38, 41, 38, 39. Not the cheapest, but it is going to give us the best overall manpower efficiency modifier. Once the barracks are done with the World Trade Center, uh, yeah. Probably makes sense to dev there. They should show up at the top of the list here if I just sort by efficiency. Tickvin. Sure. Got uh, iron. Do, do, do. We should be looking for the sweet spot 15 dev. Let's go. Boop, boop. Boop boop. Don't have enough points for expand infrastructure. Okay, we'll wait a month. Do do boop 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 boop. Weren't the Romes? Rome, Byzantium, and Moscow? I don't get why China. Ask uh ask Paradox. It's it's their it's their achievement, man. I don't have an answer for you. Alright, we're gonna do as many mill clicks as we can in the ones that are low. Do 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 do. Pikmin, we want to expand infrastructure on though. Or take it any higher. Do 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 do. We already have enough done, actually. So let's just sell titles and then seize land. Bum 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 bum. We have negative zero. Really? Wow. The odds of, of it being exactly zero is very, very small, right? Crazy. Crazy. Cheesy crazy. Anyway, um... Guess we can buy down inflation a bit instead. Bum, 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 bum. We've gained Humiliate Rival versus Muscovy. We do have an embargo on them. We can rival Poland now. Can't embargo him. Bum 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 bum. Alright, so the next war with Muscovy is going to be for Clay. We are still behind on Abin points, but we aren't gaining innovativeness for taking tech, so I'm willing to stay behind a little bit further. It'll just end up giving us another neighbor discount of 5%, probably, and we have permanent claims, and... Yes, it does make sense to take Clay here before he can secure an alliance with, like, Ottomans or Poland or whatever. He's rivaled Lithuania, but not Poland. Lithuania is still allied to Poland, but he could he could finagle some sort of annoying alliance at some point. So, time to take Clay. Varmint99, thank you for Twitch Prime. Bum, 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 bum. Let me read chat, sorry. Did you consider doing this as Muscovy instead of Novgorod? Yep. Yeah, we're just doing it as Novgorod because Novgorod's not the right religion, not the right culture, not the right government. And it's more more challenging of a start than Muscovy. Kind of. Kind of, but not really. What clay shall we take? All of it, right? What's your most developed province? Moscow. We declare for Moscow. Give it. Give us the clay! He's on tech 5 or tech 6. In before someone says innovative ideas is bad on the EU4 subreddit, like, we developed the institution. I've done a total about, I mean, how many dev clicks do you think we've done so far? We're ahead of time on two of the three techs. We have a tech advantage over our neighbor. <laughs> it's like, innovative ideas, man. So bad. So bad. <laughs> Can't believe how bad it is, man. It doesn't do anything good. You can't go innovative ideas until you have good monarch point efficiency from administrative ideas. 
Gotta get that core cost reduction, right? Right? So you can have a whole bunch of shitty low dev provinces where it doesn't make sense to build any buildings that all have high autonomy and tons of rebels and no zone of control from your forts. They're so weak and bad and shit that they're not even worth having zone of control to protect. And then you have to deal with the AI sieging it all down because they see that there's no zone of control. Man. Man. We're ahead of time on tech. We have 68.3 army tradition. Basically 69. Let's get a couple generals so that we have the ability to spread out. We're looking for hopefully a siege leader that's better than Daniil. Oh, okay. I'm off my rant. I'm off my little podium. And a bear. And a bear. Two, 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 one. Boom. Two siege pips. That's basically what I wanted. We'll do one more. Bum, 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 bum. Veg. Alex. 430. Veg Alex. 3333. Three, three. We're rolling uh, 6 to 14, and you got 12. That's actually quite new, quite useful. You are going to be wonderful for sieges. And we'll wait till the old guy dies before we uh, hire any more. Because we do want to take Miltech 7 uh, as soon as we can. Preferably we want the innovativeness out of it, but that's not always going to happen. I caught spying on Lithuania. Can't spy on you until July. That's, no, August of next month, or two months from now. Okay. Sweden, we have favors with. Um, I forgot to get Satmi's last province back. Whoops. Get 1,700 solars from Sweden. Edict-wise, we would like to swap to um, manpower in some locations, like the capital state, if we can, soon. So, this is a actual conquest war, so we will need to siege down clay. We don't have offensive ideas, so we're not very fast at it. And we will suffer some Russian attrition, right? Muscovy does have severe winters as well. So, based on that, we probably want to just chill for a bit until Muscovy moves into our lands. Let them suffer the attrition first. We take favorable fights in defensive terrain with adaptive combat terrain bonus. And then once his army is mostly dealt with, which is basically already, he only has 14 gate troops, then we can safely move in and do bare bones sieges without having to suffer crazy attrition. Also, 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 chat, do you see what I see? <clears throat> you remember when we did our first war with Muscovy and, and there was like, like one dude in chat who was like, but why not take clay? And instead, we just took money, war ups, and trade power. Look what he did. By, by, by putting an economic burden on him, he doesn't have any forts. There's only one fort left, and it's owned by his subject, Yaroslav. He deleted every single fort in his country. <laughs> every fort. <laughs> He's got a level one fort in his capital to protect him. All right, screw this. We're just going to march on him. <laughs> I did not expect that. To be so severe, but bum 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 bum. We'll go down to like a ten sec. Nah, just, just keep the army split in half. It's fine. Bum 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 bum. AI always deletes forts. You lost all of your forts, Zarimba. Still, it makes the war a lot easier, and we can just use our Boku ducats to bake a new one. So whatever. Culture converge is almost done. We can start building our monument soon. So that'll be nice. I don't inflation more. Bum 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 we have diplomats free we should spy on muscovy again for siege ability for future wars we should spy on lithuania because he's our neighbor and i don't like him bum 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 here's our culture conversion and monument. Monuments do get cheaper when you expand infrastructure, so doing some more dev here would be nice. Let's do not mill dev, because again, I'd like to get the innovativeness. We, we, we're kind of far behind on military points. We might not get it. We have decent diplo points. It's not a very good trade good, but we can do some diplo dev. Try to get to 15. 
We can expand infrastructure. And then we'll start this. Bum, 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 bum. We'll start it after we buy down inflation one more time. Bum, 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 bum. Love that 3% winter attrition. He did get a wall breach. Cheater. Bum, 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 bum. But the value of that province versus the value of his capital is so much higher that we probably just keep competing for it. Bum, bum, bum. Counter spying Pog? Yeah. We can't spy on them currently because we got caught, so... Might as well do counter espionage for now just to make the diplomat go away and stop bothering me. We don't need this many troops for the siege since we know where his army is. Let's go down to a four stack. The other way, please, so that the general stays here. That's... what? Wait, let me try that again. If I do this and I pull off... Okay, I must, I must have just had a brain fart. Normally, yeah, the general should stay behind. I must have done it backwards or something. Hey, we take a Tix capital. Cool. Uh, let's not worry about any more occupations. We're just gonna beeline for Totma. Try to pretend, prevent that fort from falling. We have 43 war score. Our peace deal will look like whatever the mission says we should do. We need to own all of it. Okay. Conquer Tver is easier to do. That's obviously gonna be part of the deal. What else? Neva needs to have full navy force limit. We need a marketplace and a dock in Neva. We have a marketplace. I need to build a dock. Fine, I'll build you a dock. Stupid sailors. Uh, apparently I did that in the wrong order. We'll click this and then we will cancel the building and build it again. Bum, 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 bum. Um, we want everything that's in our main node. Um, um. We want everything that's in this state if we can. We are getting it. We want things we have permanent claims on. Let's just double check that this stops in Kolga. Kalat Kaluga, it does. We want to partition his land if possible for... We don't want, like, Kazan to take it, so... Bum, 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 bum. What if we leave the capital? Since it's the most expensive one. Keep in mind, even though I declared for it, that the capital has an extra 5 base... Well, 4.4 .4 base war score cost from being the capital, so... Pushing the capital around in multiple wars makes you spend overall higher war score. It is a good province, but... We are just taking... We shouldn't take 100% clay. It's way better to take 65% clay and then money war ups to keep him in this economic state. So... Maybe we just do like this, plus money, plus war ups. Not as much land as some people would like, I'm, I'm sure, but... The integrating is derp yet? No. We're coming for ya. We're coming for ya. Oh, I'll go this way. Coming for ya. We're gonna get ya. We're gonna get ya! Do do. We have our good, good guy here. Our good guy is assigned, cool. Get him. Come and get him. Stack wipe? Stack wipe? Stack wipe? Not a stack wipe. Disappointed. We go here, 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 here. Also assign some of the other generals since I just combined and unassigned. This fort will take care of these three. Ustvim will not get returned to us automatically. Um, might need to siege down Yaroslav, just because it's the only other fort in the war, in order to get enough overall war score. Although there's still plenty of room when it comes to war score from battles. Um, almost have support Oprachnina available. Uh, there's also... Whoa, whoa, he just passed the second reform. No? Did I just read that backwards? Was he just forced to revoke a reform? I think the Emperor was just forced to revoke a reform. Smart. The Empire's going backwards. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Not taking all clay, how dare you. Well, keep in mind, we're behind time on tech. And... I don't want to be behind on tech. 
and it's going to take multiple wars no matter what. So taking money war ups continues to perpetuate his near bankruptcy state where he can barely afford forts and doesn't have a full army and can't afford advisors, so he's behind us on tech. Like, it just makes sense. Is weak empire better for our goals? We talked about it yesterday. I think it is a little bit, probably. Although, due to some of the religious stuff we have to do, it might be better if it was strong and got through like the first four or five reforms for us. But, worst case scenario, we become the Emperor, we pass the reforms ourselves, it'll be fine. Didn't have to worry about it too much. Do, 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 Look at that cute little army he put together. So innocent. My sweet summer child. We will go fight his army one more time to try to incentivize him to give up. We have another government reform, cool. Tier 4, tier 5, we have tier 5, wow. Unlock private privileges for the nobility which affect our infantry and cavalry. It also gives an extra privilege slot. Interesting. Establish the Streltsy. Alright, so this is unique to Russia, we should probably do this one almost definitely, right? T. Francis and Lan Tan Man, thank you for your subs if I missed you. Also, Varmint99. Thank you for your Twitch Primes, everyone. Thank you, Jeff Bezos, for giving us free money. Reduces the reinforcement cost by 10% and increases the reinforcement speed by 10% of Streltsy when using the Equip Streltsy interaction. Streltsy now demand reduced ducats on new rulers. I do not recall seeing a single event about re requiring ducats on new rulers, so that must be a, a monarchy mechanic. All infantry become 5% cheaper. Country allows Streltsy infantry. We already have Streltsy, but it increases the... We'll see limit fraction by 20%, currently at 10, so we would have 30% available Streltsy force limit. So, we could do that, or we could just choose a different one, like Sustained Discipline, which is fine. You guys want to go Streltsy? I feel like Streltsy are similar to Janissaries in implementation, so... I would not be surprised if there's like a gotcha at some point, like, ooh, the Streltsy are gonna conquer and there's a disaster. It's the Streltsy, they're they're conquering our country, oh no. But special. It's old. But special. I like how um either Twitch is like Twitch is like Twitch chat's personality has has like changed over time, or you guys just know how to sell me. One of the two must be true, but basically. You don't even have to say full sentences. Why use why use many words when few words do trick? Just say but special. And then you'll have me. Just like that, right? Easy. Oh no, his army it disappeared. Oh no. Give us the clay, you little bastard. Alright. A coalition from Ryazan. Oh no. Oh no. That's a lot of attrition that we just suffered. 4% on our whole army. Yikes. Uh, we can actually overrun that. Might as well. More death, more good. Get him. Not an overrun. Weird. Guess we didn't have technically 10% more. So right, we'll take these clays. We're taking these three for a mission, and then we're taking this because it just, like, weakens him. We don't necessarily need Yuriev. We can do it like this instead, so we have that full state. Full state is also good. Bum, bum, bum. I think full state is good. Sure, we'll do it like that. Yoink. Although we could try to touch Kazan. We are going to be blocked from expansion for 15 years through Muscovy. Maybe it'd be better to not take this at all. Just take what we need for Novgorod and focus on taking this so we can keep going east quicker. Mm, complete the state up here. Take this, this, this. We could complete our state here. Completing states is relevant, by the way, just because we're orthodox. We care about Consecrate Metropolitan. If you're wondering why I'm paying more attention to it than normal. Take this state. If we do like that, we do touch Kazan in a weird way, but complete our states fully. Full state, full state, full state, and then we touch Kazan. Kazan has gold mine. True. But we've talked before about how... Do you think we need gold? Do you think gold is the issue? Do you think that the reason why we're not making more money is because we lack a gold mine? Also, we do have gold income. Why do we have gold income?
How do I have gold income? Like, literally. Wait, no. What? Oh. I was hovering over this guy. That's why. <laughs> derp. Derp, derp. Yeah, I think we leave the capital for next war. This, uh, this sets us up to have an adjacent level 1 capital fort to siege very quickly and easily with our army pre-positioned. Like, it's actually better to not take it. Because, again, the increased war score cost for capital provinces. If we take it now, we're basically giving away 5 war score in this war. And then we're shuffling the capital to another province, which makes that province cost like 5 more. And, uh, again, this does other things for us, so this is fine. Give clay. Give the clay. Look at all these cores we can do. We've done a mission. Permanent claims on stuff. Cool. Click. Alright, um... We will continue to fall behind on Abin Tech. That's okay. Um, we are 47% overextended. Let's do... do I want to complete these full states over here first, even though they're small and cheap and bad. Whatever. Actually, hold on. We should consider doing... Let's just check and see. Can we exploit or concentrate dev anywhere? No, they didn't take one of the good states. All right, fine, whatever. Just, just give me the course. We should start spying on Kazan. Um, um. Could have also considered trying to border Ryzan, but that makes us fight Great Horde. We can convert a province. This one. This one. It is Tengri. Based on our goals in this campaign, do we want to convert away Tengri provinces? Tengri is one of the religions we can use to become valid for Take Mandate CB. So... My back-of-the-head thought for like how we're going to do that part of the campaign is to... Uh, you know, abandon provinces, abandon states. What do we have to do to make the conversion happen? I don't know that we want to just have really, really low religious unity for a long, long time while conquering into Tangri clay. Because when we colonize all the Tangri clay, it won't be Tangri. It'll be our religion. Unless Siberian frontiers are different and they don't convert. I don't remember how Siberian frontiers work when it comes to religion. Typically, when you send a colonist... It converts culture and religion to your own, but I think there's also a rule about same continent. It might not convert stuff on the same continent, is that right? The Grand Frontiers do convert. Damn. Okay. I think it's going to be so far into the future that we're actually doing the Empire stuff that it does probably make sense to kill, to still play correctly. Like, play to keep the religious unity high and uh, deal with flipping religion as its own challenge later in the campaign. Challenge number one, get strong enough to beat people. Challenge number two, uh, get close to both the Empire and the Chinese Empire. Like, step three, do all the shenanigans required to become the Emperor. So, this would fall under step one. Just proper play, keep the control of the country good, make the country prosperous, and, uh, you know. Can you make religious rebels convert your territories? So, if we do this, then these guys will flip to Tengri separatists. Like, it's theoretically possible to try to flip to Pagan right now. To flip to Tengri. If we can trigger a revolt of Tengri rebels and let them occupy stuff, turn our forts off along the way, they will force convert the provinces that they occupy. We technically could become Tengri right now. We would lose Orthodox. We would lose, I believe Neva requires you to be Orthodox. The monument, doesn't it? Uh, no. Just requires the culture. Doesn't care about religion. Good. So... Hmm. Hmm. What are the, ben the benefits of Tengri religion? Again. We can't see any tags that are currently Tengri. I guess we'll just Google it. E4 Tengri religion. I remember it's got, like, Cav cost modifier, I think. 
Bum, 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 bum. I want to see Tengri. Where Tengri? I don't want to see all of this, I just want to see the specific religions, please. Why? Okay, here we go, yeah. Captain infantry ratio plus 25, regiment cost minus 20. All regiments minus 20, wow. That includes uh, artillery and cav and infantry, all of them. Hmm, not bad. Honestly, that's pretty pretty damn strong. If that just said artillery cost minus 20, that's strong, you know? Hmm. I thought you can't flip to Tangri by Rebels, only Animist. So we just did it with Frankfurt. We flipped to Animist. I thought Animist was the special one where you can't accept Animist separatists. Like, Animist, um, you can't accept demands from Animists. But is it, maybe it's true that it's all pagan faiths. I don't know. I don't do these types of weird shenanigan -y flip religion things that often. Animist is the one with exceptions. Okay. So yeah, so Tangri should work like any other religion. It's just based on getting them to break the country via 50% province count occupation on a monthly tick. And, uh, and then we would flip. So if we flip to Tangri right now, using that province as a seed, then we are basically committing to going east first. Because obviously Tangri can't become the emperor. But we can't really go east quickly until we have access to Siberian frontiers, and that won't happen until we are able to form Russia, which we can't do for another solid four techs once we're caught up on admin. So that's like 60 years, right? Roughly? 50, 50 to 60 years before we're going to be on admin tech 10. Forming Russia does not require orthodox, no, we checked that yesterday. This requires you to be on admin tech 10 and own the right cores. According to someone in chat yesterday, the missions do not care about orthodoxy, but someone could have gone on the internet and been wrong. Why do we want to be Tengri though? Because in order to get access to the Take Mandate Cassus Belly against the Emperor of China, you have to be either Animus? Sorry, you either have to be a pagan religion, or you have to have a religion from the Eastern religious group, which is like Confucian, Buddhist or whatever, and all that crap over there. I think Theravada counts. So. It's one of the potential religions we can use to get access to the Take Mandate CB. But long term, we have to flip religion to something over there, and this is one of them. Bum, 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 bum. And then we also have to consider that because the Empire is weak, that going Emperor first might be the easier play. We're only one governor, go, yeah, one government reform away from being able to flip to monarchy, and then... All we'd have to do is flip Catholic, and we could just take over the Empire. Taking over the Empire won't be easy, but it won't be that hard. Flipping to Catholic is... how difficult. Basically, our next war with the Livonian Order, we just take clay, and then we do the same thing we're talking about with Tangri Zealots, except we do it with Catholic Zealots. I feel like the issue... the biggest issue is... Even if we flip to Tengri right now, we're like 50 to 60 years away from being able to actually bust through the fog and get to the Empire over here without going exploration or something. Which we could technically do. We could we could take exploration ideas to the second... No, just to the first idea and then recruit a couple conquistadors and just conquista our way over. Um, we also have the ability to steal maps now. Yeah, we can already start stealing maps. That's something we should start getting getting going on right away as well. Let's switch this guy to Spy Network Construction, and let's start spying on people pretty aggressively. Francis H87, thank you for Twitch Prime. Also, P. Francis. All of the Francises are subscribing. This pleases me. Bum, bum. I am pleased. If you go HRE first, you gotta spend many boring years to manage the HRE and enact reforms. True, but if we don't go HRE first, then we are leaving the Empire and its pathing and whatever up to the AI, which is going to be dumb. They're probably never going to pass any reforms. 
If the Emperor stays weak, very good chance that the Protestants League War wins. Which means that Protestant will be the dominant faith. Either way, we have to do multiple religious swaps. But the smaller you are, the easier it is to do a religious swap. I think I'm overthinking it. I think we... In the short term, Orthodox is better for us. It does more than Tengri, because Tengri is just money. Money is good, but 20% regiment costs doesn't compete with the potential for dev cost minus 10, constructor cost minus 10, AE impact potentially, um, or just the 33% manpower we can potentially get from, from Orthodox Patriarch Authority. So, I don't think we flipped Tengri yet. Do you care about passing reforms? If we go Empire of the Itchery first, we do care about passing reforms because we have to get to here. No, here. We have to get to the point where the Itchery is always inherited by the same country, which allows you to stop worrying about your religion. Once you have this one, you can flip religion and you don't lose the Empire anymore. Otherwise, without this, the second you stop being the correct faith, you instantly trigger an election and someone else takes it. So that's, that is a lot of reforms, potentially, but... How will we handle Mandate? Probably just, I don't know, look at it. Conquer all the things. Whatever we have to do. Do do do. We have no actual missionary strength here. We're at 0.2%. Um, do we want to flip it? Do do do. Do. Um, I think we do. Do, do, do. Really don't re like actually need to lower autonomy since we have access to uh, reform Subnik. So maybe we don't for now. I'm feeling a little bit better, but I still have the the side effects of like Rona, a little bit of a little bit of sniffles. Also, uh, morning voice all day long. We have a new general from the estates. It is this guy three four four two. Pretty good. Sorry, Panda Bear, but you've been fired. Let's have new guy drill. We have negative 3,000 manpower. Wars to do. Missionaries working here. Sure, fine, good. Missionary. Wow. That's one of the higher dev provinces, actually. Um, um. We have no privilege slots. Try to get more missionary strength. We have a half price production efficiency guy, so. Um, I want to keep that guy to try to get caught up on tech, but we do want to flip to a missionary at some point. Develop the capital. It's a pretty aggressive aggressive option there, burgers. But they're offering money. And uh, I like money. I like money. Get manpower to 50%. I mean, that's never going to happen. But... We had slots. We could do the thing where we can auto-turn in. Bum, 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 bum. We're ahead of time on tech. I don't need the Dipple Points unless we're going for Espionage or something next. I don't think Russia needs to go Exploration to colonize quickly or anything. So that still makes Espionage very valid. Also, I like money. I like money. Just do money. Money. We have money, more money. We're on manpower now. Um, bum, 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 bum. Well, are you asking if we like money as Triple Rome? Ave Pecas. Kazan is now dogpiling Muscovy, as they should. Bum, 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 bum. We can become Defender of the Faith. That does give missionary maintenance, but does not affect missionary strength. And missionary strength is our issue. That will definitely trigger a rebellion over here at some point. Um, bum, 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 We can do the monument. Do, 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 Let's do it. Boom. Monument. This monument will give us reform progress growth plus 10%. And 0.25 yearly absolutism, also flat local institution growth. 
You could go EOC now with Steel Map, Conquest through Nomads. Yeah, we can make a, a path. We have to physically touch the Empire of China if we want to get take Mandate. So it'd be a big old snake claim. It's like a snaky, snaky appendage thing. Um, we are spying on Kazan, slowly. We're not very good at it, but... We get a spy network guy that's not half price, or that's not full price, rather. A trade efficiency guy. Bum, 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 bum. We're making good money. We could save even more if I flipped to the land maintenance guy. Morale of armies guy is perfectly fine. Who's in charge right now? These guys? Let's get the traders back in charge. They make us the most money. And I like money. I like money. Do, 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 do you like money? I like money. Sorry. I'm never going to stop saying it. Don't even... Don't even try to convince me. I can't build many factories yet. Oh god, should we build a rup- <laughs> Should we build a ramparts in Lucky? <laughs> it's so stupid and overkill, but it's sort of hilarious. Never mind, we don't have admin tech 6 yet, but still. Make Lucky, like... What does it do again? Another plus one attrition, more defensiveness, and another plus one defender dice roll bonus. That would be the... What, the stone they would beat themselves on? Gain money. I... I... I, I like money. <laughs> That's great, I like money. <laughs> Alright, we can get a claim on Kazan. Um, bum, bum, bum. Probably keep spying on him so we can steal maps, but also get siege ability. He is allied to Bashkiria and Chagatai. Chagatai should have a subject whose name I forget, but I think it starts with Y. Ashkiria is a one province minor? Weird. Okay. One province vassal of Kazan. I wonder why this exists. Kazan doesn't normally start with that. Did they conquer it from Uzbek and then create a vassal? Or did it get spit out by rebels and then Kazan attacked it directly? Like, the AI doesn't usually attack and then release subjects. I'm kind of confused by why this thing exists. But overall, it'd be an easy war. Kazan's on Tech 5, we're on Tech 6. We can't see Chagatai in his subject, but... You do have to factor in that they are part of the nomadic tech group, so they have way more pips on their on their on their uh, units than, than we do, but we do make up for that with tech. So we should be fine. Also got to factor in flat terrain advantage for them. Bum, bum, bum. We can turn this one in now. Local sailor modifier plus 100% and we get a permanent claim on Riga. We could actually attack Riga because the Emperor's Hess. So, the fact that it's part of the Empire is kind of irrelevant. It would be 50,000 troops, but... And he is part of our trade league, but... That doesn't mean we can't do it. Hmm. Do, 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 do. Wait for Kazan to finish the war with Muscovy to get clay for missions. Yeah. We could attack right now to try to, like, make them not take much land from Muscovy, but the thing is, when land changes hands, autonomy goes up, right? They're going to take clay. It's going to set the autonomy floor to 50%. Autonomy affects things. Did, did, did you know that? Did you know that autonomy affects things? It affects these things. But there's another thing that it affects that's not in the list. If you look at the war score cost for a province, it'll say, from local autonomy, Minus 0.65%. Higher autonomy provinces cost less war score to take. Did you know that? So, letting him take stuff is good. Because it makes it cheaper for us. Do 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 do. We can make old man Yaroslav. Pop pop Poznadik? Posadnik. That's the word to describe president, right? Or something? So his name is just Yaroslav Yeletsky. 
Portugal found something. Cool. We get a new admiral. Okay. Sure. I like admirals. This one has more maneuver. Tank master. Thank you for your 11th month. Go, go. Why no forts? We have 285 development. We have four forts. We do need more forts. Bum, bum, bum. We need six. We have money. We can extend zone of control. Sure, let's do it. Or do you mean why no forts like in Muscovy? Because he has no money. Not good terrain. Um, considering we do have the age bonus, woods is very favorable over building it in flat terrain. I think we will build one here. The shin won't be protected, but that's okay. And then over here, it's the wrong type of woods. But we do want to project zone of control further. Like, see, there is a fort here. So this fort projects to here and here. I'd like one, like, here or here, just so that this is a wall. But we have to wait for cores. That'll be where the next one goes, somewhere up here, I don't know. Do do do. Missionary's doing his best. 1.2% a month. Wow. Wow. Look at that now. As we can. Competition for innovativeness from Diplotech. We have 49 days left. Someone took it in November. Two years ahead of time penalty for six innovativeness. Definitely worth it. Yoink. Mine now. Innovative Ideas is so bad. It's like the worst idea group in the game. I can't believe that it exists in its current, like, form. Paradox really needs to do something. They need to buff it so that it's on the same level as all the other idea groups. Otherwise... Otherwise, I mean... What's even the point of including it, you know? You know? This is the sarcasm just, like, dripping off my face. Um, bum, 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 bum. Gross. <laughs> You're gross. <laughs> Alright, Kazan won. Muskie's no longer a valid rival. That didn't take long. Guess we have to stop embargoing him now. Also, Tavera exists. Which means Tavera's gonna die after a month or two passes. So, yeah, we'll take all the clay that we can get. We'll declare here. Let's go fight some people. It'll be funsies. Do, 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 do. For nostalgia. Defender of the Orthodox Faith. Hmm. It does give morale of armies and yearly prestige. Only 500 gold. Most dangerous aspect to De Defender of the Faith is if it pulls us in against the Ottomans, which... Wallachia already is dead, so is Serbia, so is this guy. Uh, Imerti Trebizond are also orthodox, so we probably get pulled in when Trebizond gets attacked. We don't have to defend, but... The money could probably be better spent on, um, Monument. Probably. I want to take your clay. Give it. We will do two stacks, and we will have half of the army ready to go attack Tver, hopefully before he gets any friends. The other half can go up to, like, here. They're probably going to block me from finishing my conversion over there, which would be annoying, but... This guy can't defend him while they're already at war with us, so... Tver's garrison is very small. It'll be a quick, easy siege. Get our three siege equipped guy here, and our, our other guy over here. Actually, it should be this guy, because he's got more maneuver. There. Give clay. Okay. We have no truce with Rostov either. Rostov did manage to secure an alliance with Ryzan. That is just another province we can take. Or, in the meantime, like, for, for right now, they could just join our trade league. That does give us more land enforcement and stuff. In fact, both of them could have joined the trade league, but... But my clay! That is... Not what we want. Let's wait till they move out of their flat terrain fully and get up into our good winter provinces. Lose... Uh, what? What? How is this even a choice? 
Our official in Velsk has earned a reputation, reputation as a greedy, cruel person. Hmm. I guess we like killing officials. Sure. Neat. <laughs> Fun. That embargo on Muscovy still. Do, 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 do. We'll fall behind Shenkursk. They're going to occupy everything that's not in zone of control right now over here, but it's all right. We'll also go for like these. So we should actually stay here. We have very low manpower still, so let's pull most of these dudes off. Try to alleviate some of the stuff. This is normal difficulty. We're playing on hard. We always play on hard. Do admin dev. Nah. Make the Ottomans like us to get a half price diplomat. Very useful right now, because I think we are going to diplomatic ID group next. We are unknown to them. But we can get them to 100. We'll start working on that. Does this node affect the Ottomans? No. We actually can get a merchant down to Crimea now, which means Trebizond could join our trade league. Would they want to join our trade league? And do we want them to join our trade league if it makes us fight the Ottomans in the future? Probably not. Of course, you don't have to defend your trade league. Not required. Do -do -do. Why not very hard? Because um, we should create a command for that. Like, I don't have to keep explaining it. Very hard doesn't make the game harder, it just makes it tedious. It makes it less fun and more tedious, and doesn't fundamentally improve the AI's play at all. It just gives them artificially bloated numbers. It's like, think about all the complaints that EU4 has levied against games like Civilization. Like, oh, look at all the AI bonuses they get. Where this game, it's all about AI plays just like the player with only a couple minor advantages. Well, very hard goes the exact opposite of that and just says, let's give them all these stupid modifiers because we can't make the AI more competent without cheating. You know what I'm saying? We are waiting until January for tech, so we don't pay any penalties. This army does not want to come any closer. I wouldn't either. Let's give them some more space. Give them the opportunity to come and actually get out of that fort of Shenkers. Um, they will help us again, apparently, sure. Kazan's on tech 5, we're about to take tech 7. In a month. Do do do, we've got Rezev. Um. Do do do. I guess, I mean, I'm just taking this because it exists and I want it. It's just like extra clay from Muscovy, essentially. But. Um, take Miltech. We have access to artillery now, we have some manpower. We have 27 net income on 48, which is 56% net income ratio, so we're definitely going up to... Whoa, wait, right, we have room for a lot of Streltsy, I forgot about that. Let's get a bunch of Streltsy, all the Streltsy that we can train, and then the last 4-4 summit can be artillery. Bum, 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 bum. The raw stuff too? Yeah, maybe. I'm thinking about it. It's a little bit more work because there's a level 3 fort and a secondary participant. Um, and it's just one province. They do have a center of trade. No, they don't. The fact that they can, that they'll just join a trade league voluntarily if we're at peace kind of makes me feel like it's better to use them for that. Another bit of max manpower, a little bit more land force limit, naval force limit. Just a little bit more useful than a single province at the moment. Are you guys really never going to come any closer? You're just that scared, huh? I see. Our dude is benevolent. Yeah, he is. Yeah, they're scared shitless, apparently. Do -do 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 they have a level 3 fort in flat terrain. If they're not willing to come to us, then we're just going to have to go start sieging down stuff over here. We don't have military access. Must we will give it to us, though. I have no relationship slots available at the moment, though. We don't need the Alliance to Gotland anymore. Really. Or Scotland. In fact, Scotland is probably a liability now. He is properly allied to France, but England is going to attack him. 
94, 94 favors, 55 trust. Time to abandon him. Bum, bum. I kind of forgot that we were allied to him. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. Should we dump somebody? Basically, trade Scotland for Sweden. Or get rid of Gotland. Eventually, like very soon, we're not going to be a republic, which means that we aren't going to have the trade league. So there is maybe some value still in keeping Gotland, just that he doesn't raid us after we lose the trade league. But I think we dump Scotland based on that. Sorry, Scotland, you're not worth the relationship slot. You're not worth even one diplo point to me, buddy. I'm sorry. It's just the way that it is. I have to spend that relationship on military access instead. Okay, yeah, we got access this way. Let's go threaten him down here, and perhaps that will cause them to act up north. The goal is just to stir the pot so that they move. We don't want to try to fight him in flat terrain, so we'll see. We do have, uh, like I said, Miltech 7 versus 5 now, though, so it should go easily either way. It's not about whether or not we can win, it's about winning as efficiently and with as few losses as possible so that we can continue to attack people like Ryazan and Rostov and Great Horde, etc. It did prompt them to go there, so we're going to now head north. With that stack. The stack can also go north to here. These guys are going to group up. We're going to want our best siege leader here now. And this guy here. Should be four artillery, which is great for the Kazan siege. Be nice to get up to six artillery for the double opportunity for siege things that we uncovered in the Frankfurt campaign. Okay, he's trying to go to Ustig. This guy's gone on the 27th and the 1st. We're gonna come in here, try to prevent that army from retreating. And now we have a Kazani army that wants to be fighting on flat terrain that's stuck in Russian winter woods and uh, in a fort behind a river. He is a bad general as well. This army only has two cav though, so we should probably wait and try to get both all of our cav to go there. 21st, 20th. Sync up the arrival of those. 11 infantry, 4 cav. Should be a good, a good engagement. And we've got our 3-4 doing it. That's good. There's admin tech. That allows us to build workshops now. Let's... Not put them in charge. I think we just build a workshops. So it's fine. We have a lot of money. You get a workshop and you get a workshop. Everyone gets a workshop. Kill. Kill. Good ratio. Good exchange. Good job. I can go to there, that can go to there. You can come over to here. Just with the Livonian orders up. Uh ba -bum 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 -ba -ba -bum. as expected, they're blocking me from doing my missionary, which is annoying, but because we don't have zone of control over there yet. Boom. So I mean, go straight to the fort. Bum, 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 bum. Not friends anymore. Pepe Sadface? Is that what that one's called? What's that frog called? Feels... Feels Strongman is the name of the emote. Weird. We can do Streltsy click. Equip the Streltsy. Lose war exhaustion that we don't have. Oh. Uriel Vox gifted 10 more no. subs! Total of 15. Gifted 5 yesterday as well. Thank you so much, man. Um... It played the correct sound effect this time. Weird. The weird problem we had yesterday is not happening anymore. We just click this whenever we can, right? Pretty much. That's good. Bum 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 ba dum bum bum. 
We'll just pressure the actual fort until they either go for one of our forts or until it falls. It is dangerous because it's flat terrain against a horde, but we have 30,000 troops available to reinforce, so I doubt they even try to fight us. We have some artillery with a three siege pip general. Would love, again, to go up to six. Honestly, we should be trying to push for uh, 10 artillery with our current economy. Might want to delete some of our bad infantry. Bum, bum. Bum, bum. Bum. They've re-elected Hess. Because they're stupid. Ooh. Bum, bum. We can turn on inland routes here. Siege ability plus 10. Siege ability go burr. Bum, bum. You were hoping for all the sounds again. Yeah, I figured. Yeah. I was... I mean, it was kind of entertaining, honestly. Uh, we're already getting a half-price Diplo guy. This is a full-price guy anyway, so... Add my points, please. Lithuania is now attacking Muscovy. Poor Muscovy. Just kidding. They deserve it. It's my Russia, and I want it now. We are almost capped on opinion with the Ottomans. Religious tensions. Lose. I don't. I don't care about unrest. It's fine. Unrest is irrelevant. Bum, 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 bum. I am very heavily leaning toward just going espionage ideas again, because we only have two diplomats and we're locked at uh, duchy rank government until we become Russia. And espionage pairs super well with Russian ideas, so might just do that. Okay. Um. Bum, 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 bum. We need the ticking war score. Let's go. Oh, right. I declared for Nizhny Novgorod. We already occupied that. Cool. We have it. Sweet. Guess we just kind of move forward and pressure provinces. Rebels! Sir! It's the rebels. They're here to defend us! Good. Tangri Zealots will soon spawn as well. It's perfect. There's max opinions with the Ottomans. Now we just insult somebody. Like, say, the Mamluks. Who don't matter. Give away some prestige. That'll do our mission. Half price level 3 guy. We will swap to him. That is this guy here. Bum, 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 bum. I don't have eyes on the full army. Pretty sure there's another stack, like, here, right now. We'll just keep creeping forward slowly. Try to get to the Bashkir, Bashkir fort. Start spying on Kazan again. Can't do our core till the missionary's done, which is slowing things down. This is the one with the artillery. Let's try to get over to Bashkir with that one. These guys can go to Perm. You guys go to here. You go to here. What type of bagels do I like? I like everything bagels. I like having a lot of stuff. I also like schmear. I like putting a lot of... A lot of schmear on my bagel, you know? Whatever that stuff's called, the, uh... What is that? The white stuff called? Not that white stuff, Jimmy. Shut up. The... the, the no, cream cheese, that one. Thank you. I'm glad we didn't immediately go to some place perverted or sexual. Roomba likes to smear white stuff on his... <laughs> nice wall breach, cool. Um... They're suffering, um, they have to fight natives because they don't have the ability to march over there and they keep, like, trying to go there. It's kind of funny, actually. Alright. We could push for... I mean, I can't easily get there because I don't have access through Uzbek. I don't see Uzbek. I can't get, you know, I have to steal maps. We almost have enough to steal maps, but... I think we just, like, take some clay and be done with this. We also have the ability to reset our truce with Kazan if we want to immediately attack Rostock. So what can we do to Kazan in this war, and then how can we punish him by doing a quick reset? We just take a bunch of direct money, and like, one of the forts that we just sieged, like the Bashkirt fort, since it does have the gold mine. Take like these two. We could also take his subject without having to occupy it, which is convenient. And then we could take direct money, reset truce, 
break alliance. True. Yeah, if we if we spend 10 war score breaking his alliance to Chagatai. This is one of the circumstances where it actually makes sense to spend war score on that. I need water. Jimmy, give me water, please. We just do this now, and then immediately attack next month. Discuss it over bathroom soda. It is not quite lunchtime, but I'm going to try really hard to remember to eat lunch more than I usually do. Bum, 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 bum. Considering we're still behind on Ebon Tech, and it is what we need to be able to get our next idea group started, I don't really want to have to core more land at the moment. We do have a relationship slot open once we cancel military access through Muscovy, so we could consider creating a subject over here. I know, I know, someone immediately is going to say, but gold mine, but gold mine. But what if we created a Bashkiria and then fed him the gold mine and whatever else we're taking so that we can compartmentalize overextension, compartmentalize wrong religion, compartmentalize wrong culture, and let him actually have the fully maintained level three capital fort potentially. Actually, I don't think he'd move his fort, because I think that's his proper capital right there. It's weird, though, that Bashkiria is the name of the country, and they don't have a core on Bashkird. Like, shouldn't they? Considering that that's their name. Does he have claims? He does have claims. He's got a bunch of claims. Which would be useful in the next war, but we'd have to force Vassalize instead of Phalanx release. Otherwise, the claims won't be there. Unless... He gets the mission. How did he get all these claims? Maybe he would just have a mission for it. If he ceases to exist and then we make him again, does that reset his mission turn in? Can he turn it in again? I don't know. Disappointed that when you form Russia as Novgorod, it doesn't give you a perk compared to doing it as Muscovy. What's the perk that you get for doing it as Muscovy? They do use claims, bordering claims. You think this little one dude fabricated all these claims against one person? Remember, the first claim costs 20, second claim costs 25, third claim costs 30. I doubt he fabricated all those. And he only has one economic idea. It's not like he has espionage. There is no perk? Right, but what is the perk when you do it as Muscovy? Was my question. Like, what are we missing out on? Why are claims lost on annexation? Because the, the subject, the, the country ceases to exist. A country can't have claims if they don't exist. If they had returnable cores, those would still be there. But when you are looking to create a subject, capture, like full annex and release is a good way to update them to your tech level, but you lose their claims and you lose their army and you lose their manpower pool and their treasury. All those things are gone. They lose their general, like it's a brand new tag. So they have to create new stuff. If you force vassalize, they still exist, so they keep their generals, their admirals, their navy, their army, any existing claims they have, any treasury that they have, any manpower pool that they have, etc. So there's a pro and con to doing it in both directions, but... Honestly, like, I don't think we need the claims. I'm gonna go espionage ideas probably, so... We probably just full annex release. You don't want to deal with a Republic vassal when you switch anyway. Hmm. Yeah. We probably flip to monarchy as soon as we possibly can, just to get that part done. Which is happening soon. Although, there is an argument to stay Republic as long as you can, because apparently you don't lose government reform progress when flipping now. So, going Republic first for a long time and getting to like tier 10, then flipping to monarchy means you're going to be a tier 10 monarchy. And a tier 10 monarchy takes way longer because they don't benefit from the 100% Republican tradition government reform speed modifier. Yeah, no, it didn't happen to us, Loxy, when we did Frankfurt. I was shocked. I really, really expected to lose three government reforms, and we didn't. We were still on Tier 7. It's just a stab loss, that's it. Lotharon Prime, thank you for sub. Does informing Russia flip you? Yeah, but we... we again, we need to have been Tech 10. We're about to take Tech, tech 7, so we're still... 39 to 40 years away. That's a lot of government reform generation that we can make in 40 years. 
I think we do at least wait till then. Angry zealots have risen up in defense of our land. Ha ha ha. Hee hee hee. Ha ha ha. Yes, fight. Fight and die. Or win. Whatever. Alright, so we'll take those two provinces, these three provinces. We will break the alliance to Chagatai. We will take whatever money we can get. And then we're going to immediately reset our truce, I think. Cancel access through Muscovy. Assuming he's willing to defend the other guy. We have a new valid rival, Hungary or Sweden. Hungary is our, Sweden's our ally. I forgot to return other province, so we should do that now before I forget. I guess we're rivaling Hungary. Because we can. Echo Gami, thank you for Twitch Prime. And also thank you to Jeff Bezos. We have too much governing stuff now. We have, hey, we have the Cossacks, sick. I totally remember that that was a thing. That is an argument to not release this province. You just need one province that is in step terrain to get access to them. Hmm. Maybe we just keep all the land ourselves then. Having access to the Cossacks estate is great. It's great. 20% calf combat ability, up to 20% reduced calf cost. Also, if I recall correctly, guaranteed land leader shock pit, 0.5 base yearly morale, uh, yearly tradition. That's worth half of fully maintained forts. It's great. Conquistadors. All oh, right, true. You can get conquistadors for these idiots, can't you? Somewhere in here. This one? No. This one. No. This one? No. This one? No. This one. Are you sure? I feel like you're right, but I don't remember. There it is. Gain a conquistador with idiot tradition. Huh. Does cost crown land. Also, our crown land went down. So we're down to 10% if we want to sell titles. We probably just seize land in order to avoid that. Bum, 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 bum. Option A, release Bashkiria. Lose the estate. If we lose the estate, we could potentially take advantage of it, actually. Like, I could turn some privileges on, like, say, this one. Click the button to gain 10 army tradition. Then release the subject, and then because we don't own a steppe province, the Cossacks cease to exist on the next monthly tick. All the privileges get revoked. And then the next time we get a steppe province, we could potentially... I think the internal cooldown, the 20-year cooldown, would still be remembered, but... We could get a few of the benefits. And then still release the subject. Yeah, we will get the estate fairly soon anyway, I agree. I'm not sure I want to spend 5% crown land right now for a conquistador. Rather than spend 5% crown land, I'd be more likely to take one point in exploration ideas and hire a conquistador or two, and then cancel the idea group. I value 360 diplo points less than I value 5% crown land. Crown land is very important because crown land is crown land is just insane, right? 10% crown land is 1200 gold. So that's a lot. I'm going to do this. I think we're releasing the subject. Let's get our army tradition from these guys. I think you can get more than 10 if they have higher influence though. So let's turn some other clicks on. See if that's true. You can turn this on. Turn on all the clicks, really. Bum, 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 bum. Bum. Anything that doesn't take uh, Crown Land to grant. She's at 15% now. Yep. Cool. More, please. I think to get higher than 15, you have to go all the way to like 75 or 100, or though. I'm not sure. I think I've seen it as high as 20%. Unfortunately, because they exist and then cease to exist, we might end up just losing crown land. I don't know what happens to the Cossacks crown land if they cease to exist. If it like reverts to the crown or if it gets distributed equally. Let's find out. 
We will take the 15 tradition. This only affects Cossacks, which we have none of, so there's no point in clicking it. Let's release our subject of Bashkiria. Take a screenshot. All right. And I want to feed as many of these provinces to him as I can so that we can compartmentalize the problems we have right now. Including the gold mine. Don't kill me, chat. This one we are still converting. It is a completely different religion to what he is. But... It's okay. Alright, option A. Reset our truce with Kazan by attacking Rostov. Option B, just allow Rostov to join our uh, trade league. Hmm. Option C, reset truce with Kazan by attacking Rostov, but then don't annex Rostov, and then after the peace is over, ask him to join the trade league. So we can reset the truce and get him into the trade league. Trade league is very valuable, because it's land force limit, manpower, Naval Force Summit, etc. You know. This derp can transfer trade and embargo rivals. Bum, bum. Unfortunately, because his capital's not where I think it should be, it doesn't have good autonomy. Dad. Resetting truce gets us further east quicker. Probably. So I think we do that. Bum, bum, bum. Let's just go... And he did mothballs for it. Probably should have actually waited till the first so that he doesn't have a reinforcement tick or two, but I already messed up, so whatever. You go here, you go here, you go here. And that core is basically done, so we're going to be able to start our fort up here soon. We need a general here. We can do this decision, but again... Interesting, the Cossacks didn't disappear. But why though? I don't own a step. Huh. Does having a subject own the step keep them existing? I'm confused. Hmm. I really thought they'd just disappear after that. Another monthly tick went by and they still exist. Strange. All right, well, I guess if they're going to stick around, then we want to... Do, do, do. Is it smart or is it a bug? One of the two. We can get a 100 tradition conquistador, but again, it costs crown land. We are struggling with governing capacity, so since I have a privilege slot open, it might make sense to just do Cossack land rights right now. Mm-hmm. Actually, just just in case, I'm gonna reload the save. I wanna see if it's like a a bug. General availability. Available to any country that is Christian, has Eastern Technology Group, and owns at least one province with step terrain. The estate remains available even after losing the last step province. Well there you go. They must have added that. One sec. Why are we, uh, why are we rioting, Jaikor? We're at 40% progress, I don't understand. What are you upset about? I wonder if it actually is worth 5% crown land to get access to some... Ossics. The force limit fraction would be very small. And I don't really want that many more cav. Although they will have 20% cav combat ability, potentially. It's a lot. Oh, you're rebelling because of the gold mine? Hmm. Well, hey, in 10 years we'll integrate the guy, okay? <laughs> we riot because we can. 
Because we can, can, can. That's a song from Moulin Rouge. Reference. Also, before I forget, I wanted to turn off the option for culturally renamed provinces. Because I can't pronounce them. Mine, it is off. Huh. Weird. I swear I saw culturally wrong named provinces yesterday. Any reason for us to integrate Satme at some point? Because we can? Because there's a mission for it, maybe? Conquering Riga gives us just claims because we're already at Mercantilism Cap. Protect the White Sea trade. We need all the provinces up here. We need one more province to get this one done. That gets us claims on more of Sweden. We're only allied to Sweden because we wanted to shake things up here. We could break the alliance to Sweden and fight him soon. Bum bum. Alright, so if they're going to stick around, I do want to get their influence to 60 and loyalty trending to 60. What else can we turn on here? Mm-hmm. 2.8% Cossack Force Limit Fraction. Eh. Eh. Local dev cost in step provinces and the decision to get the Conquistador. If they're never going to go away, this slightly has more valuable to more value to me now, but the 5% crown land, as I explained, is very, very important. I would va I would rather do this, honestly, I think. It doesn't get them all the way to 60%, but it does help out with equilibrium being slightly higher than 60, and it fixes our governing capacity problem since we are a duchy. However, crown land is already at 15 points something small. Should have seized land before declaring this war. Ba -bum. We just want to peace out quick. I think we're going for white peace on Kazan. Bada bum. Bum bum. That also means we have a little bit more force limit with the new subject. Um, do you want white peace yet? Negative 11 reasons. Conversion is still progressing, but slowly. 1.2%. We are basically caught up on admin tech. As soon as we get admin tech 7, I'm going to flip out of the production efficiency guy, find a missionary. That core did finish. This will eventually be ours, but until it is... Where do we put our next fort over here? Not really... A great location to cover all four provinces, is there? Hmm. We only need six, and we're on track to have five. Hmm. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Hmm. Hard to know where the next one will go to since I can't see everything. The train is awful. Uh, it's not the same train as our capital state, so our capital province rather. So we're not going to get adaptive combat train bonus. So there's nothing to consider there. Rivers are unlikely to matter. Um, this one's pretty well surrounded on all sides. We're going to end up needing a lot of forts, so I think I'm going to put it here. Bum, 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 bum. White piece, please. Negative nine reasons. ODF wants military access because they're doing a thing. They're also joining Lithuania in their war against Muscovy. Don't tell me you're going to expand and stop being a free city. I will kill you. I will kill you. I will make you cease to exist, sir. This army probably heads over to Ryzan. There's Kazan Fallen. Rather than just straight white peace, we probably take war reps and money. We could take um, one more province. Maybe that helps out with the plan on where to build a fort. Also, this guy has a core. One more core here. 
It costs Diplo points, but it would be kind of useful. It's only 15. This is fine for now. Uh, yeah. I don't want to take much. It's fine. Black flagged. March over to here. And here. You guys can come over to here. That fort. That thing done soon, hopefully. Maybe. Two diplomats free. Doing nothing. We're supposed to be spying on you for steel maps. I forgot to continue doing it. Probably spy still on Kazan as well for more steel maps. It'll, be get, it'll get a lot easier after we get our... Uh, Espionage idea is done. We're at war with you. Here, go to like here, and you can go to like here. Going down to here. These guys can go over to here. I want to get done with this war as fast as possible, I think. These guys can go to here and here. We have access through Muscovy. Basically, yes, due to occupations. Go to Ryzen, go to Kashin. And down to Kashin. We got room for two more troops. One more troops. Get another artillery. Actually, I'm going to build four more artillery, and we're going to delete some troops so that we have room. I want to get all the way up to ten. It's really important, I think. Delete two regular infantry from this army right now. Make room for some of it. And maybe... Build one from somewhere else as well. Bum, 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 bum. Admin Tech. The 361. Man, innovative ideas is so bad. So bad. Innovative ideas, man. We only have 35 innovativeness. Okay, cool. Innovative or, sorry, espionage or offensive in our current position. Espionage gets us the ability to steal maps so we can go east faster. Also helps us to get diplomats required to get people to like us in the HRE potentially. It also allows us to touch the HRE with claims quicker. Sinks synergizes with Russian ideas. Because we aren't strong enough yet. Offensive, because we aren't strong enough yet. Are we not strong enough yet? For, well, well, while the Golden Air is active, I feel pretty strong. Um, I don't like how it's a three tech gap between second group, third group. So I think, I think I'm actually gravitating more toward espionage second as the standard instead of innovative offensive. The AE impact earlier helps a lot. It also gives advisor discount where offensive doesn't. So it like snowballs monarch point generation harder than offensive does. And uh, yeah, I think we go espionage. Focus espionage. Let's swap to missionary guy now. So a few forts on the path. Yeah, and espionage. While well, espionage doesn't give you the guaranteed siege pip and the 20% siege ability that offensive does 30% really when you factor in innovative innovative offensive policy just the fact that you have more diplomats and you can get to 100% spy network a lot easier kind of gives 20% siege ability ish because you're more likely to be at, at 100 ish that is a three stab conversion events aristocrats lose influence all right sure Bum, bum, bum. We don't need the prestige, so I guess we're taking monarch points. Patriarch authority is good. Take our first idea. It was first picked in 56, so we're not going to get any innovativeness from this group, but that's okay. Just out of curiosity, do you get it from offensive? I think you have to have it selected to see it. Also first picked in 59. Okay. Whatever. Powering through it. They have a point. No, they don't. They're idiots. Everyone's an idiot. All of them. Build that. We do have access to um, ramparts now, and we have plenty of money. There's a barracks here, which I probably shouldn't have built. Whoops. Let's delete that and build ramparts, because we can. We're going to make Lucky the luckiest province in the game. It'll be great. You'll see. What kind of deal did Lithuania take? Uh, not sure. Let's look. 
50 admin points for 5 Patriarch Authority, yes. We'll take that. Lithuania took... 1, 2, 3 provinces. They left the capital intact. And they just took a few. I'm sure that's land we're gonna need, but no big deal. We'll definitely be strong enough to beat them. In the near future. Gain autonomy in the province we're trying to convert. Or don't. Let's don't. Turbrakos, thank you for your sub. We almost have enough to steal some maps. I'm excited. These artillery can also go here. Pull most of the army off. Putting one more infantry, please. Since we are very low on manpower. Here's the Ryan Zan Fort. Uh, this guy, it's just gonna be the standard stuff. Like, I don't want him in the war. We don't need to worry about taking that clay yet. It's sort of irrelevant. Okay, Rostov. You're allowed to cease to exist now, once the armies are in locations where they can get black flagged. So again, option A, conquest because we can. Option B, let them exist because we could add them to the trade company, or the uh, trade league. Because it's required, I think, for forming Russia, we'll just probably conquer it. Fine, we're not going to be a republic for forever anyway. These guys can all head toward Neva. You guys can go to Ingermanlands. Just in case, left more go there. We want to get Crown Land back above 20%, so it looks like we're seizing. It'll piss off the Cossacks, don't care. Oh no, they've rebelled. Um, and let's steal some maps from the Great Horde. We want probably Central Asia. But to do that, I need an army in the Ural node, Ural area. Like here. Captain Alex, thank you for your 15th month. I am worried I might suffer from parasocial obsession of looking to public figures for life advice. Can you tell me what I should do about it? <laughs> That's clever and funny. Uh, you should continue to do it, I, I think, in general. Like, it's a good idea. I think that uh, the social figures or whatever in your life, are they're all very smart people, if you think about it. Really. I mean... We start that core yet? 26% missionary strength, next idea, AE impact, and Republican tradition point three. Cool, cool, cool. We can steal our maps now for Central Asia. Nice. We know of stuff. Ashkiria lost all their claims. Uh, we can tell them that we want this, this land though now. Maybe they'll fabricate for us. And even if they don't, we have espionage ideas coming online. In fact, we already have the first one, so we can do claims on whole states already. Everyone's gonna come down to here. Supply is how good? 30? Get these guys here to drill. You guys come back too. We're over by one. I'm not gonna worry about it. Never mind, we're not over by one. Our autonomy just went up. And uh, we just got access to a new mercenary company. So we got that going for us, which is nice. Do, do, do. We have no truce with Livonian Order, and that was how we were planning on getting Catholic. I think we get a spy network built up on them and get ready to claim a whole state. We could honestly just flip Catholic and try to become the Holy Roman Emperor right now. Like government reform progress, we're almost we're almost a monarchy if we wanted to be. Gain money. I like money. I can't believe you like money too. Wow, you like money? Need two more artillery. Let's make it so you and you, sirs, can die. Also, I forgot to rename our Big Bertha, so I'm gonna pretend like this is the first one we trained. Okay? I never forgot. I never forget anything ever. Ever. Bum ba bum ba bum. Defensive edict is still on. Nuh uh. 
That's missionary strength edict. This is manpower edict. You're wrong, Jimmy. Wrong. Just wrong. No. -uh. Bum bum bum. Um, I was looking to maybe do Crownland into Cossack Land rights. It's a lot of dev to get enough Crownland for it, but we're nine years out of time on tech. We have admin and diplo. Sorry, admin and mill points available for clicks. Mill points in the capital state for manpower is great. Cost to dev is pretty low, 38, 38. That's without the local dev cost edict on. So yeah, doing some dev is very reasonable. Except that we need more other dev to make it possible. Really hate doing admin dev instead of diplo dev, but the trade goods are all trash in this state. Except for like one. How many total clicks are we talking? 25 minus 20.874 divided by 0.2. 21 dev clicks. Let's assume we can get the cost to an average of like 40. 21 times 40. 840 monarch points. Can't really do it right now, but over the course of the next few years we can get there. Could do that. Could do. How's our dev to forts? We need six and we currently have five. I did start a sixth here. We're on track to have our sixth. We're doing all right until we do that next dev push for 20 or whatever. Only one more rebel army to deal with. Retrial of the Joan of Arc. These guys are going to spawn where? Like probably Rezev. We can make it into a 15 stack. Let's get ready to deal with them then. Another age bonus. I don't care. Just pick one. Claims, ordering claims, sure. Boom, boom. I cannot believe our original general is still alive. It's kind of crazy. We could integrate Peskov and Satmi right now. We get them to 190. They're not, uh... I mean, they're giving us land force limit, which is useful. But... We're doing a diplomatic ID group at the moment, so kind of don't really want to integrate them. Get manpower to 75%. That's never going to happen. Build a workshop in Neva. That'll happen. Have 10 light ships privateering. To make the Cossacks happy. They are mad right now. Doesn't really matter that they're mad. Bum, bum, bum. Build a workshop in Neva. Can't build a workshop in Neva because we're currently upgrading our monument. Let's finish the monument so we can build a workshop in Neva. We have a monument now. Can you believe it? Our missionary's done. We lower autonomy anywhere. It will cause more rebellions, potentially, but... I like lowering autonomy, generally speaking. Could have done it before the rebellions. Since it resets the recently... recently rebelled thing. For some silly reason. Now he's dead? Why did you say it out loud? Oh. Is he? No, he's still alive. You're a liar. He's not dead. Why is everyone going on the internet and lying? I'm confused. Do 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 do. Barracks? No. Forts? No. Postal blockade buildings? No. Churches? No. Marketplaces? Maybe? Sheridan? Upgrade centers of trade? Maybe? Nope. That one, maybe. That's why the marketplace looks sort of reasonable, but we don't have enough dev here to upgrade it. Plus it's in a node downstream, so it's kind of irrelevant. Um, monument complete. Yeah, we're going to upgrade the monument again, I think. We've got enough money for it already. Just throwing money away. Just blobbing. This guy's almost 69. Nice. When's your birthday, buddy? He was inaugurated on the 9th of February, but that's not his birthday. 
Come to think of it, is it even possible to know when a Republic commander, like a Republic leader's birthday is? If it were a king, it'll say the birthday. Pretty sure, right? Hmm. Maybe not? When's his birthday? Elections are only held on his birthday? <laughs> Reduce? Sure, just click that, I don't care. You guys drill. Bum, 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 bum. Robber barons. Hmm. Okay. Bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum. Muscovy finally embraced the Renaissance. Nice. Perfect. Good job, buddy. You're trying your best. We are struggling for governing capacity. We don't even have room for full states everywhere. Very motivated, I think, to get this extra five crown land now. We should wait for prosperity, though, if we're gonna be forced to do it. Here's our truce with Lithuania. Do, do, do. Lithuania immediately diverted, canceled divert trade. They don't want to divert trade to us. How many times we got to teach you this lesson, old man? Like, <laughs> we could immediately fight you again if you want. Thing is, I don't really need any of his clay except for probably these two. What do we actually need for Muscovy or Russia? We need. We need Smolensk? Or do we not? Ryzen or Smolensk. We don't need both. Okay, so... He actually hasn't taken anything that stops us from forming Russia yet. So we could do another easy show strength war, or uh, show superiority war for money. Bankrupt him again, get him to delete all of his forts. Well, he hasn't deleted them yet, but he will if we keep pressuring him. Uh, we did not give the privileges yet, no. No, because we don't have the crown land. I want to stay above 20%. When you're above 20%, autonomy trends down. If you are below 20%, then you have to be at peace just to negate it from going up. And every time you're at war, it goes up by 0.1 per month, which is a shockingly large amount. It really adds up, especially when you play like I do and you're usually at war all the time. So we're trying to get through government reforms quickly and therefore I don't want to let autonomy grow. So therefore we have to stay above 20 you're heading to bed? Why? We just got started. Nizhny Novgorod exists. Hmm. This guy is also independent from Muscovy now. We could attack him and fight Ryzen again. We could also just let them join the Trade League. Um... We do need Ryzen's province, but I can't take it yet. Could force vassalize this guy, or try to peacefully vassalize him. No, he thinks he's a fancy pants. We do get army tradition for sieging his capital. It's uh, good practice, I guess. Perhaps. We also have 10 artillery now, so it should be very quick and easy. Pull these artillery over here. Get the Streltsy in there as well, if there's room. Let's get some of the regulars off. Put together our luxury stack and our support stack. We have a pure infantry stack and a pure, you know, awesome sauce stack. 12 four, pretty good stack. Pretty good stack. These guys can drill, these guys can walk. Sorry for the stupid question. Religion conversion by rebels is 50% of dev or number of provinces? It depends. Time sticking. If you want to have the religious... If you want to be able to click, pretend like this is a rebel thing, right? Like, whatever religion you're trying to flip to. If 50% of your total dev is of the correct religion, then in the tooltip here it will say when you accept that that will become the dominant religion. If less than 50% is of their faith, then you just accept the demands and take all the penalties, but your state religion doesn't flip. If you're trying to convert via um, not clicking the accept demands button, you're trying to convert via breaking due to rebels occupying 50% of your country, that's based on province count, not based on development. And it does count territories, just strictly province count. So you hover over this, see what the number says. We have 36 provinces. 
In this case, 36 divided by 2 plus 1. Or, you know, if it's an odd number, then just 36 divided by 2. That many provinces need to be occupied. Hopefully that helps. By network construction and siege ability plus 10. Hooey! Bum bum bum. Uh, yeah, I guess we just attack this guy, right? Like, why not? Gives us something to do. This diplomat is shamed. He got caught. So. Um, we'll send... Honestly, just send the whole army there for now with, uh, you. Even as siege ability plus 15%. Wow. It's trying to end the routes. Could affect both. Cool. Look at that. Plus 9 bonus. Wow. 13 day siege ticks on someone we have never even, like, spied on? Wow. That's so many... That's so fast. Most of these troops don't need to be here. Pull most of them off. Get ready to go after Ryzan. Hopefully we get access eventually. Never mind, the fort's already done. Let's regroup and go after Ryzan as a group. Bum, 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 bum. Bad bot? Why Novgorod? Because Novgorod was more slightly interesting than doing it with someone else. Generally, people were telling me that the community tends to do it as uh, Oirat Horde, and that sounded kind of silly and easy, so we just, I don't want to do it. I'd rather do it as something dumb. 5% attrition, ouch. That's painful. Very painful. Very painful. But we're done. Good. Bum, bum, bum. Done. We get black flag. We go here. You can cease to exist. Bum, bum, bum. For it. Do another decision. Sure. Drill. Become Defender of the Faith again. Upgrade the Great Project. Alright, level 2 gives us 5% more reform progress growth. Wow. Doubles the institution spread rate base and increases local spread rate from institutions in the whole state by 10%. And increases absolutism growth by 0.25 more. Wow. We can also consecrate metropolitans, which I haven't paid any attention to. We should probably look around and see if there's any other locations we can do it. Do, 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 do. Nope, not really. Cool, fine. Whatever. Monument? Monument. It's not worth the money. I, I want to make it perfectly clear. This is not worth the money. But what else are we going to spend the money on, you know? Whatever. Bum, bum, bum. We can embargo Poland, probably. Also Hungary. Do keep our power projection at 100. Because we can. Um, sorry, the question was... Are we able to tax the Great Horde, or will it be a costly war? We do have a claim on the Great Horde, so... We do border them now, also. They would not be defended by the Oirat, because Oirat is occupied and besieged by Ming. Looks like Ming is... Forcing the Oirat to sub object to tributary status of... Oh, it's a conquest war. Not a war to force tributary. Interesting. Good opportunity to attack him while Oirat won't defend. Uzbek would join. Not that we care. We're about to... Actually, we already can. Steal maps potentially wrong. That's the Levonian order. Well, I want claims on your states. I want claims on that. Next area costs 45. It gives us a claim on those three. These are Catholic provinces, all. So we could use that to flip to Catholic. Bum, 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 bum. I'm not thinking very much right now. I feel like I might need to go get some lunch. Like, I'm just on... I'm. Can you guys tell? I'm on complete autopilot at the moment. Like, just, just like... Attack an OPM, attack an OPM, like, whatever. Like, don't have to think. Perm, are you independent? Perm's independent. So, we could isolate them if we attack... The Great Horde also. Yeah, autopilot, you know. 
send the Emperor gifts. <laughs> S. S with his 16k troops. Tech 5. We're two techs ahead of the Emperor of the Itchery. As Novgorod. Mort. So because we touched the Great Horde, we could uh, take Clay. But if we take Clay... It's not good, really. It's not required to form the next country. Um, it's all... Whatever. Most of the land is the wrong religion, wrong culture. I don't think it's part of the same culture group. Yeah. Just down to here. There's two provinces. But there are grain. Grain provinces, and there are Muscovite. Hmm... Could just attack him for the sake of taking money and weakening him. Try to get him to delete his forts. Two military tech advantage. We've got all our artillery. It'd be a very easy war. And it allows us to kill Perm. We could take Kazimov as well so that we touch Ryzan. And then the next war with Ryzan, we can actually get Ryzan, which we will need to form Mus uh, Russia. But again, we're so far ahead of ourselves. Like, it's three techs away. I can't form Russia forever. You know? There's no reason to... Do silly things, really. But money and innovative ideas. Innovative ideas, I like money. You like money. I do like money. I can't believe you like money, too. Uh, yeah. Separate piece who's back for money. Although, you can also attack no guy. Who would not be defended by somebody. Reconquest of Agade. There's two provinces that we could return to our subject from no guy. There's so many opportunities for expansion. Alternatively, we could just threaten war. Would you accept a threat for this? It's occupied by rebels, so I can't demand that one. We can only demand this one. Five-year truce with no guy for a single three dev province is kind of weak. No guy to defend no guy. Yeah, I think I'm gonna... Let me go make a sandwich. I'll play the timeline for you guys, see if we've missed anything happening over here. Keep in mind, in this save, we do have a weak emperor. Um, Poland didn't take the Union. France is still allied to Scotland. So that's most of the notable stuff. Castile does not have the Iberian Wedding yet. Castile is allied to England. France is way weaker. Burgundy still exists, but they're a junior partner under Aragon. Does anyone know if the Iberian Wedding can still fire if Aragon has their own junior partner, Burgundy? I think yes, because I'm pretty sure I've seen Castile get Aragon Naples a lot. So that means Castile might become stupid strong if they get a free Burgundy on top of Aragon. Gross. Gross. Okay, I go make sandwich. Would you like one, Jimmy? I can make more than one. I don't think I can make... I don't have enough bread to make it for everyone, but I can make like three. All right. Say, just cl you claim the sandwiches in chat. Whoever claims them first is the ones that get them, okay? Be right back.
I have returned. This is my last wheat bread sandwich. I'm all out of wheat bread. I have to make different sandwiches tomorrow. Weird. Hmm. You worry that I'm the type of person to send a sandwich through the post. And that the followers <laughs> are the type that would eat it. <laughs> I think you just managed to insult everyone here. <laughs> Good. <laughs> nice. Hmm. 147 points to integrate that derp. And this derp is... 112. We dump our alliance to Sweden and get ready to attack. Well, I don't actually need to attack him. We can just take land from Norway. Hmm. Norway independent yet? No. What if we take... Hmm. Hmm. He's almost willing to accept a threat. Hmm, wait. He is, because it's a core. Give. I did it. Are you proud of me? I've protected white sea trade. Wow. We now have 102% mercantilism. Wow. Wow. What about getting all of Norway with the age ability to transfer subject? That costs diplo points. Banana shaped so well. <laughs> yep, Beshkir is our vassal. We have three subjects right now. Three subjects with three members of our trade league. Um, sorry for talking while eating. Harm would join our trade league, but we're about to murder him. How did we get so much mercantilism? We abused a mechanic. Let's not use the word abused, because that makes it sound like it's cheating. We utilized a game mechanic whereby you can <clears throat> gain mercantilism from the burgers if you have three centers of trade in a single trade node. And we did it over and over and over again over the course of like 30 days to gain three mercantilism through 30 times. Uh, because Paradox can't write code good sometimes, and the check for when you're allowed to click that button is not happening when it should, and has been that way for a very, very long time. It's called, uh, the Exclusive Trade Rights Privilege. Not exploited. Utilized. We utilized the in-game mechanic. If it wasn't meant to be that- be used that way, they wouldn't allow it to be used that way, right? They would fix it. But the fact that they haven't fixed it, you know, I recognize that that's similar to the the logic that, um... What was that guy in the Netflix, uh, documentary? The one that, like, broke into homes? And he basically, he said, like, if he tried to open a door and it wasn't locked, it was an imitation. <laughs> I realized the argument... That was you. Oh, that was you. I, I see, Almighty. Almighty Ruby. <laughs> I realize that it's very similar to a serial killer's rationale, but if they didn't want us to use the mechanic, it wouldn't be in the game. All right? All right? Also, our dude is 69 years old now. Happy birthday, Yaroslav. Happy birthday to you. Serial killers are people too? Are you sure about that? What if there was like a serial killer dog? Like, what if a dog kept killing people with the same, the same modus operandi every time? Like, couldn't he be considered a serial killer? To be a serial killer, don't you just have to kill serially? As in, like, one after another? Like, serial processing or whatever, you know? It's just, like, sequential? That's, the, like, the way I define that word or feel that word should be defined, isn't it? Hmm, same pattern as well. Could be, yeah. Alright, should we just attack all the things? Let's attack all the things. There's really not that much reason to think anymore, right? We just blob? I should focus on, like, snaking to over here. Like, we really could do this achievement way faster if I think about it, like... We don't have to pass reforms if we go Emperor of China first. 
We really could just flip to Tangri and just go take it from Ming. We're probably strong enough already. Not like with our direct force limit, but when factoring in combat ability and money, just the amount we could go over our force limit, we could probably beat Ming. Not to mention Ming's going to be pretty, uh, pretty behind on tech, I have to imagine. Well, maybe not yet. They fall behind, but usually, usually around colonialism, which is only 15 years away. Odds are Ming exploded? Probably not. They're currently, currently in a fairly successful war against Ming, or, uh, Oirat. So I think Ming is fine at the moment. All right, first off, you die. Let's make sure we're doing, uh, mm. Buy network type stuff on these guys. Inland routes doesn't affect anyone we're fighting, so we'll turn that off. Go back to uh, spy type stuff. And spy on people for steel maps. We are in semi dangerous terrain right now against a horde, but he's two techs behind us and he's also in his own war. So feel pretty confident just marching forward one province at a time. While we're doing this war, we can attack Perm. So let's have the infantry stack go over there, get ready for that. Bashkiria is not scootaged, so his army might get killed if he ever has one. But, um, Icon of St. Michael has been forgotten. Oh no! 57, wow. Suddenly we have 57% Patriarch Authority. That, that actually grew super fast. Keep in mind, we're getting uh, 0.75 or whatever per year. But then also, like, an extra one if I continuously sell titles effectively. That's pretty fast. But, um... In this case... It might be time to go back to Icon of Christ. If we turn it on now, we'll it'll last long enough to be around when we want to dev push the colonialism institution. Hmm. Is this one or this one? <laughs> I feel like we could still use more economic power. So I'm going to go with the one that helps us with that. So we're going to go this one. Also, we are over the governing capacity still, which is sort of annoying. We should probably walk back a expanded infrastructure. We've lost our Admiral. The old Admiral, though, not the new one. Okay. I have no claim on Perm? What? That's weird. How did I lose my... Why do I have no... What? 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 That's impossible. Ba -dum, bum 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 ba -dum, ba -dum, bum I guess we can drill up here while we're waiting for our claim. Shouldn't take too long because we are building 2.47 per month. We... Yeah. Should be fine. Buy that inflation back right away. Take admin tech early. Gain innovativeness because innovative ideas is really bad. And uh... You know, lets you, it lets you take everything early and develop a lot, and make a lot of money, and do whatever the hell you want. Half price level three commandant sounds wonderful right now. It does slow down our ID group very slightly, but yeah, we'll take a half price guy. That would be you. We got another fort. 
Only 31 more score because Uzbek is in the war. I do want to peace out Uzbek. Let's head over to like here. Get ready to fight him. Off with his head, sure. Fine, good, whatever. New national decision, new general, sure. I like generals. New general is... That guy? 153? Not bad. I mean, should we kill Daniil? Dude's 82 now. He's gotta die eventually, right? <laughs> he's been around since... He's been around for 42 years. We've had this general for 42 years. Crazy. Yeah. I'm gonna keep the old man. He's earned his right to be here, okay? He's a beast. Let him retire? Damn it, he died. <laughs> we made someone else solve Sudoku instead of him. Lose government reform progress. Um, but I don't wanna. Um, okay, we got 3-3-3. Three, three, three. Let's go to 3-4 here. Let's have another our guy go here. Claim on perm. It's going to cost 20, I believe, still, because we don't have full espionage. They did take our forts. They're leaving before we can get there, but should get it back very quickly. Um, let's have half the army go breach this fog, so we can see. I need to get up onto Uzbek's capital. <clears throat> Instead of... Uh, Isolating Perm, we could, again, use Perm to reset the truce with Great Horde. Not sure that we need to do that. Probably better just to eat the Perm. Only three dev, but whatever. I don't know. These are all just things we can consider. Gotta bust that fog too. Let's go get our money from Uzbek. It's time for you to die. Take our next idea, another dip mat. More advisor cost discount. Cool. Um, three whole dip mats now. Wow. Start spying on people even more aggressively for maps and things. Bum, 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 bum. Uzbek's going to take a little bit of convincing because they probably only have the one fort. They haven't taken back in the war, but taken, taken back in? You're definitely losing the ability to say words occasionally. Taken back in. They haven't taken back in the war, Golan. Taken back in. Turn dev cost back on. We have prosperity here, but not here, so... We can do dev clicks in Neva. Sure. I like it. Sold. Boop boop. Boop dee dee boop. Boop 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 boop. Boop boop. Boop. You can upgrade this level 3 now. Not that we need the sailors, but there's a lot of sailor efficiency here. 155% already. Um. I'd rather do Ingerbilland. Hopefully that doesn't put us too far over the governing capacity again. I guess we have to walk back the reduced infrastructure of the capital still. Unless we can get all the way to 25 and then I'll turn on the other thing. Cannot improve because we don't have enough points. Okay, next. This one. One, two, three. One, two, three. Orzok. One and one. Tickfin is part of the state. Yes, it's already at 15, 15, 15, 15. All right, is that enough? It was enough. Give me the governing capacity, thank you. Problem crisis averted. Is this tall Russia? This is innovative Russia. As we all know, innovative ideas is really bad, so take it with a grain of salt. It might not be the best. Once again, continuing our perfect shock rolls this campaign. Don't know what the hell's going on. It doesn't make any sense, but we're kicking butt in that way. Get these cores done. We've won a siege of Tumen. Gives us 35 war score. We want money. This is a conquest war, so we could take state claim. 
we touch white rat it would require um two provinces only because it looks like our rat does own this one three dev provinces can't make it a core because it doesn't touch stuff and things <laughs> we did not scootage this guy so he is in the war i could give it to the subject but yeah i would probably do it that way gotta go here bum bum Stop sieging that fort. Don't do it. Stop it. You can take Iglinio. Iglin Iglino. True, but that's 9 dev and I don't really need it. I just need to touch Oirat. We just need to stake claim our way over to touch. The fewer overall provinces we have, the easier it will be to... Um, to flip religion multiple times. So, snake claims, low dev provinces, in this case, is actually kind of good. Potentially. Is there an actual fort up here? Oh, no, we're not at war with that province, apparently. That'll, that'll do it. Touching tips. Who's back? Give that. Answer this to Bashkiri also. Yeah, perfect. Two, three dev provinces. Gets us adjacent to Oirat. Negative 34 reasons for the deal. While we're here, we might as well reveal as much of this land up here as we can, although. With espionage ideas, I doubt it's going to take long to steal maps to connect to Ming. Should go very quick. We can do a decision. New Admiral. Okay. New Admiral is more good? Yes. Good. Don't take it. Took it. Kirk. Firm has fallen. Give it. Could feed this to Bashkiria. Not part of a state that we own. But it's orthodox or, or relic. Let's take it ourselves then. Cancel our core. Come back from uh, the one in order, I guess. Bum 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 bum. Go back to spying on him. We don't really need more claims on the one in order, but this might as well. Whatever. Whatever. This army can come down here and threaten people. Just sort of glare at them menacingly. Give the clay. Give these two clays, please. Negative 16. Let's go down here. You guys can go to like here and here. For Smooth Brain, was that a joke about innovative? Yes, it is. Yes, sorry. <laughs> yes. Innovative ideas is the best idea group in the game, hands down. There's no question. And especially in single player, like, yeah, no. I'm just making fun of, I'm basically making fun of the people in the EU4 subreddit on reddit.com who like to talk about things without knowing what they're talking about and say say things like innovative ideas isn't a good idea group. Especially in, Engle you know, single player EU4, it's not a good group. Hmm. I'm just not a fan of people going on the internet and being wrong, you know? They should they should be right instead. Being right would make way more sense. Like as a choice. Give it. Thank you. He did it. He gave it. Okay, this army can come to here for now. These guys can head to here for now. This army probably can beat that army pretty easily. But we have a siege specialist here. No artillery, but 18-day siege sticks are pretty good. Uh, we keep getting caught spying on the Livonian Order. Do they have espionage? No. Why are they being so rude? I'm like, knowing what I'm doing and stuff. Rude. Finish our cores. Doo -doo -doo -doo. They're also going to attack no guy. So, let's do that. I mean, the army's right here, why not? He also has no friends, so whatever. Give the clay. 
You can go to here, then here. You can go to there, there. You're gonna go to here, to here. You guys are gonna siege down Sarai. Winter Siege. Lose band power? No. Um, actually, if he reinforces, that'll be a dangerous fight. We still have the war goal, shockingly, so ticking war score is up to 12.8. We want this and this so we can reach Ryazan for the future. And other than that, we just kind of want to tax him, so... When he's ready to give away the stuff... I'm ready to let him off the hook. Bum, bum, bum. No guy just gave away some of the land that I wanted to Uzbek. Well... And yet no guy still exists? Over here. I see. I see. Vassal? He'd be a horde if we force Vassal. I can't, I can't annex and release because he's uh, too far away. This is rude. Hmm. We could. If we if we touch the tips again, make a snake to to no guy, we could full annex and release, and then uh then they would be at least our government type. They'd still be a horde. Or sorry, they'd still be um Sunni. It is a fair bit of returnable cores. We actually don't have the relationship slots to do this right the second, but like... Um... Something like that is doable. Don't take trade power. Take money instead. And then we don't even have to fight him right now. Sounds good. Yoink. Bum, bum, bum. We're gonna keep these two. No guy... Hmm. Um, we could actually feed all of this land to no guy, and then I don't have to core right now. Bum, 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 bum. We can get new maps from Kazan. Um, I'm just gonna click down the list until one of them says yes, and then click it. Like, I'm gonna steal maps from everyone. I don't, I don't care. Rebels. No. Oh. Dumb. He's trying to, <laughs> trying to rebel bomb us. Hmm. This is our siege speed guy. Let's leave the artillery, but pull this guy off. And pull these guys off. And go down to like very few troops, because we are kind of low on manpower. Hey. Hmm, <clears throat> okay, sorry. Losing energy. We talked earlier today about how uh government reform speed with republics is like way, way faster. But in the interest of just, like, focusing on the achievement, should we just go monarchy right now and just be done with it? And, uh... If we were monarchy, then the only thing stopping us from becoming the Emperor of the HRE is become Catholic, and the only thing stopping us from the Emperor of China is touch him and become Tangri. If we didn't, if we don't become a monarchy, we probably go for supremacy of the diet.
It will only take 30 months to generate the governing reform, government reform points that we need to pay the cost to flip to monarchy later. Right? It's only cost 50 to switch on the same level. Yeah, I think we stay Republic still, I guess. Seems fine. Alright, we're gonna full annex no guy. Hopefully he is part of this right culture group and we can release him. We can. Good, good. We're gonna not release him yet. Um, let's get these troops to mostly head to here. You guys can group up and head to like here. And we need to integrate one of our derps. Neither of them have enough opinion to be derp, derpy, derp, 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 derpy, derpy integrated. But we are good at, we're good at improving relations. Shouldn't take forever. Um, so I guess we're just sitting on this overextension. When, once we release Nogai from Orda, we'll give him this, 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 this. We will keep Muram because it's part of our culture group and because it is our religion. But everything that's his Sunni religion, we'll let him handle. For now, compartmentalize the problem. We have a truce with everyone, but it's okay. Also, we do want to steal maps, specifically targeting Oirat, so that we can maybe get started on that. Let's also mark all this land as vital interest, see if he can fabricate some claims for us. Rebels, sir. The rebels. They're here. And, uh, until the Rebels actually have good progress, let's just drill. Bum, 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 bum. We have 48 force limit now. Nice. In three Republican tradition for summoning the Diet. Wow. Build a church! Um, uh, make Bohemia like us. We don't need to do that. Build a marketplace. Do military dev in this province. Love to. Sure. I was already doing that game. Sure. Click. Uh, you have to wait one more month. <clears throat> Two more months, rather. More maps from the Great Horde. Let's do... Whatever... This is... No. I need... I need West Siberia to see Oirat. West Siberia. That one. Give. Now mark this and this. We can start spying on Oirat ourselves. Let's do that. To sound very hard or normal, it's it's on neither of those. What a strange question. <laughs> We're playing on hard. <laughs> Does this sound very hard, easy, very easy, or normal? None of those. <laughs> All right, we're gonna spy on Oirat. We did gain a lot of land force limit. There must be a lot of grain here. Or something. You need Rizan to form Russia. Yep. Yep, I'm aware. Rizan. Oh, Odiev ate it all and left our trade league. Which means that we have no truce with him. He's allied to Lithuania. Interesting. We're still three admin techs away from being able to form. That's why I'm not, like, worried about it at all. Bum, ba -bum, bum. It's actually on very, very hard. It's actually on very, very easy, because we're kicking everyone's butt. Our monument is already almost 20% done, wow. We still have two grand. So we got that going for us, which is nice. In inflation? Alright, sure. I don't have enough points to buy it down. Gross. Come back from uh, Mr. Satme, and we're going to send a gift to you. And then improve with Satme again. Next month we'll do the opposite. Get them both to 190, sync up the integrations. It'll slightly slow down our ID group, a little bit, but getting at least one of them integrated so that we can create the other guy and stop being overextended is probably worth that cost. 
This guy was going to cost how much? 145, and you cost 131. About the same. Boom, boom. This gets us another merchant and global trade power, so we'll turn it in. Get a guy over to Astrakhan or Crimea. Probably Astrakhan, since most of the money's going the wrong way. And we... This is not a... Uh, this one's mostly going where we want. Just send it here, I think. Hmm. <clears throat> Let's get Claim to go to war with Odiev. Yep. That is something I want to do, but... Diplomats are... Pretty, pretty busy at the moment. Lose loyalty of the Cossacks. Cossacks lose influence. Gain base production in Penza. Or don't. Boyars affect land maintenance. We can... Seize land again. Quite a few more Deathflicks away from being able to sell titles. But I do like money. I like money. Do you like money? Like, how much are we talking? Because, uh, we got 600 points here. Also, innovativeness? Ah, competition for innovativeness. If we take this in January, it's going to cost 661 minus 60, so 601, and we have 573. So we can get the innovativeness if we just don't spend our points. Let's do that instead. Let's just seize. Unfortunately, the order I did it in is bad, now the Cossacks will be mad. We can wait a few months, I guess. Not that the rebellion's that big of a deal. Why are you guys suffering attrition? That's wrong. 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 That's a quote. Wrong. Just the word wrong is a quote. Are you aware? Jimmy, are you aware? It's from Wally. Who can name the person or whatever? Are these all no guy separatists? We should release no guy now. You bet every word is a quote. You might be right. Is it time to dump Sweden? I think it is. Sweden, you suck. Go away. I don't want to be friends with you. You're dumb and ugly. And you smell bad too. I want to create no guy. No guy exists. No guy can have clay. All of the clay. Except for that one, which we do want to core. Congrats, Snow Guy, you exist. Are you proud of yourself? You should be. This is Oirat Spy Network to get a claim on, like, this state. We require 30 Spy Network 4, but I can't do because it's not my own land, it's owned by a subject. And you can't fabricate claims for subjects anymore. So we need him to do it, or we need to integrate Bashkiria, or we need to seize his land. These are all options. Am I a fan of Settlers of Catan? Yeah, I used to... We actually did, uh... Uh, Wii? Or... No, it was a Nintendo Switch sponsored thing with Settlers of Catan. I, I played it when it came out then. On that device. It was cool. Guess we should improve with this guy too then. I don't think it's been 10 years. Can't integrate him till 91. Two years. Might be easier just to seize that 3 dev province and uh, fabricate claims that way. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, bum. Oh no, it's a disaster. Except not really. I do not like how the army is mixed and matched right now, so let's get them home and regroup and get the luxury units pulled off so that we can get the trash units sent to go drill in Neva. Um, here. All the cav and all the... these guys can go there, grab the special units can go there, regular infantry can go around, and drill in Neva. Get out of my province, Pskov. You're making me suffer attrition. Alright, taking tech in January. Right now. Four. Two years early? Still two, huh? Alright, still worth it. 
That's a claim on Odiev. Is it the whole state claim? No, we need 30 for that. Okay, we can wait. We've had the same ruler for a long time now? True. Yeah, he's getting kind of old. Um, someone had recommended it to me, Jaikor, yeah. The new Factorio expansion. It was one of my moderators. Basically, my understanding is they took the SpaceX mod and they made it into an expansion, but it's not as complicated or something. Is that a good summary? The no-guy rebels gone? Um, I would say no. The no-guy separatists are not gone. There's a lot of them. In fact, we split Uzbek in half, so... Um, his army might be stranded up here and can't get through... He definitely can't get through Oirat, right? They are rivals, and uh, I doubt Bashkiria is giving him military access. So, we'll see. Could be unintentional conquest via rebel. Bum, bum, bum. Can't see how close they are to enforcing demands, but we can keep an eye on the occupation lines. 30 spy network on Odiev is enough to get a claim on the area. You can get one on the Ryzen area. Which is just two provinces, but that's what we need for the uh, the thing. We're not going to become Defender of the Faith. Um, if you'll accept a threat, I'll do that rather than fight. Um, oh, interesting. So because our subject hasn't cored Kazimov yet, I can't threaten for Ryzen right now. It's okay. Whatever. Okay, give trade power. And we were going to integrate these guys, but then I decided to just dump Sweden instead, so... I don't think we actually need to integrate them right now. We'll hold off till we finish our ID group. More important. Trying to work on Oirat to get some more claim, or uh, more, more maps. We can go back to spying on this guy and... Like, Great Horde for more steel maps. When can we go to war with Muscovy? Good question. In December of this year. Six months. Little war score cost for Muscovy is down to less than 100, so full NX is possible. We have claims and everything. Looks like Muscovy is about to cease to exist soon. We have room for more Streltsy. Let's do that. <clears throat> we go up to 12 artillery because it's useful in inland route nodes. Oh, we have bad edicts on in a few places. Let's turn on manpower again here and turn this one off. Bum, bum, bum. That's a stolen maps from Oirat if we have someone in position. Or if any of them say yes, so I don't have to deal with it. One map, one province. Hmm. A bit less than I was expecting, I'll admit. And we get an army into... We don't own anything in Central Asia, do we? This... That's owned by Great Horde. Bashkiri owns them here. If I get an army right here, that lets us give me a maps in Mongolia. Alright, can we just train like one dude here? Bum 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 bum. Lower autonomy, sure. Get another idea, sure. Sure, sure. Whatever. Bum. Bum 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 You can get Loyal Subjects event with three or four vassals. It's more likely with five. There's a mean time to happen event. You're thinking of... It's not possible unless you have at least three subjects, and it's most likely there's a mean time to happen multiplier that happens at five subjects uh, as well. So getting a fifth would actually make it a lot more likely, but... It's not a big big discount to integration cost. Like, it's useful when doing World Conquest, but beyond that, I don't really think we worry about it too much. 61 provinces, wow. 
Okay, this guy can kill himself. <laughs> Just kill yourself. Go away. Did Ming tributary Oirat? They did. Yes, we can now see Ming. Ming is on. Tech 777 to our 778. They have 53,000 troops. They have no feudalism, no renaissance. Yes, feudalism, no renaissance. They, uh... Yeah, they only have 53k troops. We can also see the this. They've got 27 mandates. They're taking increased shock and fire damage right now. So if we were to attack Oirat, we have to fight Ming now. But... Total war score cost for Oirat is how much? 400%. Probably multiple wars to cut through Oirat all the way to touch Ming. My fastest to go like through down to here and then cut the rest of the way through Caradel. Touch him like that. That or we could go. I mean, depending on what happens with Uzbek, we could go through Yarkan and Chagatai. Ming does not have them tributaried. We'll see. Step one, touch Ming. Step two, we have to actually become the right religion, though. And becoming the right religion is going to be a little bit more work, especially because I converted the only Tangri province we had. Um, other Tangri provinces up here will work, but we gotta wait till we're Russia for those. Yeah, it might have been a mistake to convert that province, honestly. We'll see. Doesn't matter. We'll get there. Let's kill Muscovy. It gives the clay. Bum, bum, bum. We should spy on Lithuania. Bum. Rebels. Sir. Sir! It's the rebels. They are here. Inland routes, please. Sixth artillery for the extra, si extra pip. We have plus that many. Where's our better guy? Veg Alex is not assigned. Hmm. Why aren't you assigned? You're... That's your job, dude. Your job is to siege. What is my purpose? Your purpose is to siege. Siege! Do it. Do it better. Get this guy off, just in case he's not allowing the siege trait to apply. Because he's not leading. He should. Should be applying, but you know. This is uh this is Muscovy's final what death throw or whatever the term is. That's it's downright embarrassing, right? Like death oh it's death death knell. K-N-E-L-L. -L. What a weird word. When was the last time you heard the word knell? K-N-E K-N-E-L-L. -L. Weird. Google it. It's a word, I promise. And then... 20 seconds ago. <laughs> you fucking smartass. <laughs> That's smart. It's <laughs> smart, but... You shut up. <laughs> Alright. Bye, idiot. Loser. Stupid Muscovy. That's right. That's right. We're Novgorod, we're the best, you suck, go away. Technically correct, best kind of correct. Is Dean Influx, okay, cool. Hey look, we have new monuments. Monument. We have 53 force limit now. We probably have autonomy to lower, let's do that. Boop boop, boop boop, boop boop. And Maram is a state yet or not? It actually is. Weird. Lower. We are once again at the governing capacity. Whoops. Gonna be a problem. So, new monuments. Any other monuments in our country that we should know about that, that I failed to realize exist? We have two, the Kremlin. One of the following must be true. Have culture accepted or has owner's culture? We can give global modifier, regiment cost minus 10, and gives 
in just this one province. Increased manpower and a little bit of defensiveness for the state. Pretty weak overall. The payoff on regiment cost minus 10 versus the 8.5 grand you have to pay to get it to level 3 is probably insane. And you don't even get incremental benefits until the third level. So basically it's 5,000 gold, right? Well, no, it's still 8,500 actually. Really, like if you factor the whole cost. 8,500 gold for 10% regiment costs. Versus the St. Basil Cathedral, which is already enabled, we could use. All the states have higher loyalty equilibrium, two tolerance of the true faith, and cost of advisors with your ruler's religion minus 20%. Flavor events related to Orthodox icons will yield supplementary bonuses. I'm guessing whichever icon you have active, you get a, an event. Something. So we could upgrade this one. I don't have the admin points to start the core right now anyway, so... Level 1 just gives tolerance, but... It's not like we have anything to spend the money on. Do, 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 do. 10% regiment cost is kind of big for artillery, sorta. I would, I would argue that if you're at a stage of the game where you can build so many artillery that your concerns about saving 10% regiment costs on them, that money's no longer a problem. So I don't, I don't know. I would pay for siege ability, discipline, morale. I would pay for movement speed. I would pay for things that make wars go faster. I'd pay for manpower, possibly. But I don't know that I'd pay for regiment costs. Money is one of the least useful things once you have too much of it. In, ain't that the truth in real life too, right? No? Yes? I don't know. I'm just saying words. Do do. We can upgrade this to level 2. We can't. It's not a core. I know how to play this game. Why are you spying on you? Why are you spying on you? Your aristocrats are in power. No. I refuse. I refuse. Uh, no. Uh-uh. Traitors. You're paying money now for money later, which is not great. Exactly, right? Like, do I need to explain further? I, I, I think it's almost self-evident why that monument is not worth it. But that's true of all monuments. Pretty much all monuments in the entire game are not worth the money. Ever. Not even level 1 and 2, like... From a strict cost basis or whatever opportunity cost type calculation, like, they're just not worth the money. Bum bum... More cores... When you think about it, isn't that the case in real life too? I think it's worth the money to buy food. Oh, uh, do you mean, like, it, monuments in real life aren't worth the money? Are you saying, like, the Eiffel Tower is not worth what they spent to build it? Or... What are we talking here? The... Statue of Liberty? How much did that cost? Now we need to compare it. Kazan, can I have some maps, please? Of a place. Persia, maybe? Uh, hmm. A little tricky now to get maps further east without, like, poking an army out there. We'd have to get somebody all the way into Mongolia to get a map, maps of North China. Lorat would give us access, but I don't have any relationship slots, and we're doing a diplomatic ID group, so I value them. Yaroslav. Yaroslav is independent. When did that happen? Oh. Right, I remember that happened. We can isolate Odiev from Lithuania and get Ryazan that way. And then we can attack Ry uh, Lithuania directly. It gives the clay! It gives it and it gives it now. Mm -hmm. This is what you get, Odiev, for stopping being a free city. Or a trading city, or whatever you're called. He also deleted the fort in Ryazan, good for him. We'll split the stay. uh... Oh, hey, we have no morale, okay. Well, whatever you say, buddy. Let's pull these two plus the Streltsy off and have them go join so we have the full 12. Take care of secondary participant first. We do not need Inland Routes on anymore. 
but might as well, I guess. It's fine. Bum, bum, bum. Renew influence over Bashkiria. Nah. Once was enough. Pull half this army off, go here. Half this army, go there. Um, they should add tourist income passively to monuments. Like in, uh, what was it, Distant Worlds? Or what, what game were we playing where tourist income was a thing? I forget. It was a recent space game. Might have been Distant Worlds too. Kind of sounds familiar. Shit! I took tech instead of taking the final idea. 1444. I'm bad. I just clicked the button because it was at the top of the screen. And it was tempting me with its clickiness. Um, we have won our siege. It gives the Ryazan. And then it goes away. Or we could save Diplo points by demanding it through the war leader. Probably better to do that. And say, did it wrong. We want Siege Guy up here. We want you to go here. We want you to go here. Except that you got there too fast. Now you're not there. You can go to here. We want you to go here. We want these all to come off. We want our subjects to fuck off. Go away. You're bad at sieges. We're good at sieges. Go away. Thank you. Are we drilling? We're not drilling. You drill. Go. You drill too. We've got... Okay, good done. Easy. It gives the clay. And then it goes away. Bye. Governing capacity is still over. I guess we have to walk back more expand infrastructure because we're just still restricted by our governing cap being so low. Because we are a duchy. We should be a kingdom easily by now, but this special Vechi Republic locks us at duchy rank. And I don't have privilege slots to increase uh, governing capacity anymore. And we're one tech away from getting the bump, I believe. Yeah, under governing capacity, next tech. It seems like this happens every single game now. I'm always at the cap. Always at the cap, right before admin tech 8. Kind of annoying. The song comes out a lot. Chad, are we still having fun? It might be time for me to take a break because I'm uh, I'm in autopilot very heavily right now, not thinking. Shouldn't you always get to the governing cap? You should try to, yeah. You should be expanding administration whenever you can. Sorry, expanding infrastructure whenever you can. The benefits are too good. Build a church! Build a castle! Do Diplodev. I like money. Problem is that we uh, are still needing another idea first. But, it's a lot of money and I like money. I like money. Um, Frankfurt to the Andes? We got it uh, two days ago. Yesterday we started this run. Continue to lower autonomy wherever we can. Let some time pass. We're really just kind of now waiting for, I guess, admin tech 10 so we'd be, we can become Russia. Other than that, um, probably take care of those rebels for this guy. Let's grab some basic infantry if we can find them and send them off to do whatever over there. Hopefully the rebels aren't actually in that area. I got land force women available. Build more troops also. Another Streltsy and more regular infantry. Let's go to force limit. Already four hour stream should rest. I mean I do still have COVID, that's probably part of it. I am like I have my sandwich, which does help, but maybe get We have okay income, but I don't want to run a full price guy. But I do want more more points. 
We haven't had the trade efficiency and inflation reduction event this campaign. I could see maybe downgrading to a level 2, generate a little bit fewer dipple points, and then upgrade to the inflation guy to get the potential for the event while also fixing the issue where we're behind on admin tech and not generating good admin points at the moment. I think so. Watch us get the event like right away and justify my decision making retroactively. You'll see. It'll be perfect. All you derps can group up here and then go take care of rebels. Boom, boom. There's Ryzen core. Equip Streltsy. Alright, sure. Click. Our dude lived so long he got his third trade. He's 78 years old. You think he's bugged again? COVID brain fog is a real thing? Ah, okay, well there you go. That must that must be it. My network construction minus 50 is not great. It lasts for 10 whole years. Well, thanks. The Ottomans want military access. They know who we are now. Interesting. No, you may not have access. No one may enter my land. Uh, the monument is delaying our ability to core here now, so I guess we have to kill a whole bunch of children. Or spend a whole bunch of money. Let's do both. We'll get that core started soon. Bum, bum, bum. I'm not liking how low our economy overall income is looking now. Um, um. Net income is negative only because of rooting out corruption at the moment, but still, it's not ideal. Auto suppress here and here. Give him a general if we can. Um, we don't have a general. We can get a general. We're 11 years at a time on tech. Alright, let's get a general. Ooh, wants to lead. One guaranteed shock, 6 to 15 pips. Let's see if we can continue the shock focused general role trend. Ilk. Ilk one. Boom. You're the first one to fail. Oh well, that's a lot of siege pips. And six maneuver. That's a maneuver bitch. Right there. For sure. Okay, we're all caught up on coring. There's a truce of Sweden. We could go take clay from him. We got missions for that. Reasonable, maybe. Extend suppression all the way up to here so I don't have to think. The rest of these guys can all drill. Bum, bum, bum. One last idea. I think I want to finish this idea group and then I might call it for now. Let these guys suppress automatically up to there. We probably need more forts. We need nine. We only have six. We're way behind on fort ratio. Getting sloppy. This fort is not projecting well. We've got this guy projecting to here. We could use one like here and here, maybe. These two provinces pretty much covers everything, right? Pretty much, except for Kashin and Rostov. I guess Yuriev might be better. Go here, here. Here, here, here. Here, here, and here. Yeah. That also takes us to nine. With little thinking required. Sold. Done. See? It's easy. Easy. Decisions made. Last idea. Boom. Bum, 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 bum. Another diplomat. Cool. We are getting caught spying on people. We can support the independence of Lorraine. Don't wanna. Don't really wanna send an army over here, but we had a relationship slot we could. Now that we are caught up on tech and finished with our ID group, definitely makes sense to integrate our derps. Uh, oh, apparently it was five years ago that I gave them their gift. Crazy. Time flies when you're letting the game run. Top them off again, top off Bashkiria also so that we can get him integrated. And uh, that's gonna be, I guess, the project for tomorrow is that we integrate three of these derps, keep no guy, maybe do a reconquest. Looks like no guy's subjects or uh, rebels, support separatists, did not succeed. We could 
take advantage of espionage ideas and actually spend money to support rebels, but easier probably just to take the clay in 98. Cool. All right, tomorrow is going to be the big push for... Decide. We got to decide early tomorrow. Are we going east or west? Are we going to go deal with the Emperor of China first? Or are we going to focus on the Emperor of the Ishiri? Pros and cons to each, but either way we have to do two religious flips. One to Tengri, one to Catholic or Protestant. Probably Catholic at this rate. East first. Which one's east? North, south, east, west. That way. You want to go east first. For sure? For sure? For sure? For sure? We're going Ming? We cannot flip to Tengri until we get some colonies done. Or conquer more Tengri land. Which is not many provinces. Pretty much just Oirat. Guess we will get some when we go through them. It'll be a fun war against Ming. Possibly. I mean, it could also just be a complete cakewalk. Depending on what his uh, mandate is at at the time. I, I, to be completely honest, I don't think this achievement's very hard at all. I mean, even starting as something silly like Novgorod, it's like, whatever. Well, converting via rebels is annoying, yeah, I agree. But it's the only option, right? No other way to flip the Tengri. So. Alright, cool. You guys want to raid somebody? Find someone else who's playing in the E4 or something? Let's take a look. Who's streaming? Only two in the afternoon. I keep on going to bed earlier and earlier and waking up earlier and earlier. I'm tired, though. Only been four hours. I did stream less today than I did yesterday, which is not my intent, but... Gork is streaming Dota with 13,000 viewers. Shen is playing Suzerain. What is Suzerain? I can't even imagine what it'd be like to have 13,000 people watching you. That'd be so stressful. It was stressful the one time I had like 4,500 people when Hearts of Iron 4 first came out. It was panic inducing nearly. Like... And it's weird because like the, the, the little number that you see showing how many people there are is not much different. It's just an extra digit, but chat moves so much faster. It's terrifying. No, I'm not going to go to bed. I just like, I'm just, uh, someone mentioned it earlier. It's a uh, COVID like brain, brain fog. Like I'm, I feel fine. My throat's not hurting. I slept a lot last night. I've been sleeping probably eight to nine hours every night, which is way more than I normally do. And I still wake up with sniffles, and uh, and then like midday I just get kind of brain brain foggy, like can't can't think straight. So no, I'm pretty much just gonna go watch some silly daytime, not daytime, but like silly uh, the TV show like the one that I watch a lot that I can't remember now, brain fog, uh, below deck, you know, like silly reality TV show about boats, turn brain off. Just turn brain off. Become shocked when the first and third stewardesses don't get along. Or like when, when someone wants the cook to make food and he doesn't wanna. And he's like mad because he's got to wake up and make food and he was taking a nap and he didn't want to have to get up. It's, it's really captivating TV, trust me. <laughs> it's fun to make fun of, but it is, it is. When you really like Take the time to explain the issue of the episode, like the things that people are upset about. You, you explain it in like word format, not just like turn your brain off and watch it, but like write it down or like think out loud. What is the issue this episode? It is that stupid usually. Aw. The people who are making tons of money don't want to work hard. Aw. But the job's hard. Oh, poor guys. They don't want to work so hard. <laughs> like... Kind of cracks me up. Anyway, uh, I'm going to send you over to Shen. I don't know what Suzerain is, but it's probably something up our alley, considering it is Shen, and he likes to play Paradox games also. Let's go learn what Suzerain is together. I'll see you over in his chat for a few minutes, and then I'm going to go. Go. So let's get ready to raid.
Am I talking about the writer's strike? No, I'm talking about just reality TV. There's a TV show on Peacock called Below Deck, and it's funny. It's, it's funny in a way that is maybe not intentional, but it's, it is funny either way. I just joined and only heard about the cook. Are you talking about Below Deck? Yes. Yes, Miss Everest, I am. The cook didn't want- he doesn't- he doesn't like it. He really gets upset when he has to, like, wake up. Usually. And also, he never gets along with the first two. Unless it's Ben and Kate. If it's Ben and Kate, they get along, but she's a lesbian now. I don't think she'll stay a lesbian, but she is right now. Just so you know. So. Top- top quality TV. <laughs> Alright. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a wonderful afternoon. Let's go check out Suzerain together. See you in a bit.